Rainbow Crow. Hello, and welcome to the Salacast on Monday, the 2nd of December, 2019. I'm your host, Dan Train. Joining me today, Zachary Burgess. You mean Cyber Monday. And Robert Kemp. I am your man. <laughs> that was quite a weak event. <laughs> like a robot voice. I am just gurgling. Yes, that's pretty much how bad that was. How I have come... spat out my mouthwash. What's the deal with the use of the word cyber? Or cyber. What, what or do you mean? The cyber. Space. cyber. <laughs> so yeah. to... so people What's use your favorite talk? way to start a podcast? Grammar. <laughs> yeah, Grammar. Well, classic. Words. Because like people used to talk about cyberspace and the information sure. superhighway. And then that kind of stuff kind of fell out of... And of course, there's cyberpunk and stuff like, um, you know, uh, fic- that fiction's from like the 70s, 80s and stuff. So that's fine. Um, but like that, this kind of cyber kind of fell out of favor, except in certain areas for no apparent reason. Like Doctor Who. Still yeah, cyber. I mean, that Cybermen. Yeah, that makes <laughs> that's sense. That's what they're called. They, they don't just, their name doesn't get updated with the times. Was well, it from <laughs> Cyborg specifically? Is, it, is yeah, that where it starts? I, think, I presume so. Stuff. Cybernetics, uh, Cyborg. Yeah. And so cybernetics is totally fine. But what I don't understand is why cyber used to be you, like associated with the internet and stuff quite a lot. It's because some I marketing understand. person heard of heard of sciencey sounding word at some point. Yeah. That was fine, but then it, it, I'm I, I'm right in saying that it kind of went out of style to say that everything was cyber, right? Sure. Around about yeah. the 2000s. So why is it, it that it sounds so fictional? Yeah, it sounds so weird and fictional. So why is it that like legitimate, like um, um, boring, normal corporate people refer to like network security as cyber security? Because that's just what it's called. Yeah. But why? Yeah, that, that is interesting. Why isn't it just like? security or <laughs> and you why, have to define it as separate like, from regular security or just so it, does either, it does either title and why when nation states like attack other nations uh, you know in uh, networking infrastructure why is that called cyber attack but what, <laughs> would, what sounds... would you call it yeah. what other word for like internet things would you call that computer attack yeah, <laughs> yeah computer attack i don't know digital it just, it, warfare is the other digi- version yeah, yeah digital warfare yeah or, or digital like security it. or something like that that sounds much more normal than cyber security it just seems to like they're using some kind of weird 1980s like that's, wor- yeah but they are that's the point but then the problem yeah. is it's a that, word that's just been around for but that it long, seems so like arbitrary it. that it's used in that context but in other contexts it seems kind of out no, because no, it's, it's used in a non-marketing context. If it's right. if it's not marketing, they're allowed to keep shitty old words. <laughs> That's call any, it cyber. I don't think any of the words they used to say in I don't know the film Hackers has ever really stayed with us particularly. I'm sure, they say cyber in Hackers. They probably sure. do. Yeah, but, probably. Like, yeah. but there's just something about you know the the attitude of what hacking was yeah. supposed to be that yeah. like made most of it. Well, it was the nineties, not. <laughs> You don't say everything is rad anyway. Rad. Unless you're, <laughs> unless you're Tim Schafer, apparently. <laughs> and then you make a whole game about yep. it. That's cool, though. We should bring back no, rad. No, it's rad. <laughs> get rid- <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's totally rad. We should get rid of cyber, though. I don't think that's rad. Cyber punk. Cyber was definitely quite rad at the time, I think. <laughs> you reckon cyber was rad? Was it awesome? Cyber Monday, though. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Is it Cyber could, Monday? Could, I mean, could you even yes. make a Monday cyber, right? Like, could you, can you take time and somehow add metal to it? I know I mentioned this on a, on one of these podcasts in the previous year, but the Penny Arcade joke about Cyber Monday, where they had, where they came up with the versions of it for the rest of the week. Because they mainly, oh, right. it was a joke they made up in order that they could have their store continue to have a sale through the whole week. Mm. So they have Cyber Monday, then you have Tech Tuesday, <laughs> Web's Day, <laughs> and then Internet Thursday. <laughs> Internet Thursday. Thoroughly regretful of your purchases, Thursday. <laughs> yes. That's why Internet Thursday is so bad. You have to make the last one be like not even a, it's not even a pun or anything. It's from Internet Thursday. <laughs> Internet Thursday. Every More Thursday is Internet Thursday. Yeah, Cyber, right. Cyber Monday's got well, that's not that clever either. Really, it's just no, no. 
Wednesday is the best of those. Wednesday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Monday. What about Saturday, Sunday? They're, they're not being covered. Yeah, yet. but they don't get covered in between Black Friday and Cyber Monday as it is. No, they just, they just get all count as like the Cyber Weekend. Yeah. It's, just, it's just your average cat day. Yeah, exactly. Cat-a-day. Yeah, every, every day is cat day. Cat day and cat day too. <laughs> <laughs> the catening. Cat harder. Did anyone actually get any, anything in Cyber related? Black related sales. I bought no. more lights. I looked at Amazon several times, but only to look at what the price of Pokemon was. <laughs> and okay. even though, even though it it displayed Pokemon in the like Black Friday deal section, it wasn't actually Black Friday deal. They were just trying to sell it. <laughs> See, now, in my head, when you said the price of Pokemon, I wasn't thinking the game. No, I'm sure you I had some kind of Pokemon stock market going on. And it's like the Pikachu has gone up four pounds against the coughing. <laughs> and it nearly got low enough that I bought it, but not quite. Because I was because with Luigi's it's Mansion... Bad. I thought it was meant to be bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to buy it anyway. With Luigi's Mansion, the same thing happened, where like a couple of weeks after it launched, it had mysteriously gone down like 10 quid on Amazon. Mm. So I was basically waiting to see whether that was going to happen with Pokemon. And it nearly did, I don't but think it only went down bad. like 6 quid. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, ah, oh, not quite. I... If it had got down as low as Luigi, I might have bought it. Here's the thing. Pokemon on paper may not actually be as good as the previous one. However, everyone who seems to be playing it still seems to really quite like it that, I've, that I have had okay, contact sure. with. Well, well yeah. it's Pokemon. Well, that's yeah. the trouble, though. It's like I, the people I've talked to. It's like, well, it's Pokemon. It's like, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I think that's. But isn't this the time where we should have had a not? Well, it's Pokemon. Pokemon. Apparently not. Yeah, that's sort of the problem. They're so ingrained in their mechanics that they don't change it. And if they did, it probably wouldn't be Pokemon anymore. Yeah, but this was their. That's. I mean, the reason they got rid of half the Pokedex, Pokedex they said was for the graphics because yeah. it was a lot of effort. But like they could have used that same excuse and had it be because we wanted to redo the whole mechanics of the game. <laughs> that if they were, if they had theoretically created all this time, they could have spent it on whatever they wanted. But then my personal gripe is, is like, hey, they went into all that effort, like supposedly, oh, we redid some of the attacks that don't quite come out of the right part of a lot of Pokemon's bodies half the time, from what I've seen. No, but also, still. but also, they still have the problem where those sequences take far too long that a lot of players turn them off. Yep. <laughs> so I was watching a mate of mine play a lot of Pokemon, and he was just a. Uh, yeah, he had everything turned off, and it was basically just pressing A to get through text prompts the whole time, like yeah. just with the Pokemon just sort of like floating there. And it's like, and that still took a long time because there's lots of delays in between the little bits of text and where nothing happens. Because the text like, speed has never been fast, even when they say it is. But that's what I mean. You could have just like you kept all the animations in and just had a button if it just insta skipped, and like so you could just go bang, 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 and work your way through it. Like, that would have looked worse though if you were skipping the animation, like if you see like a half second of every animation yeah. starting up and then you skipped it. That's all right. That's why you turn them off. <laughs> oh, fine. Everything's on. What they should do is just everything's go, on and skippable. That's great. Just do a full Final Fantasy XII and just have a speed up button where the game oh, just right. runs at four times speed or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emulation up. Well, it's draining the games this week. I mean, at this point, Boom. Pokemon should just do a full Final Fantasy XII and just let you program what you want the Pokemon to do so you don't actually have to constantly select the menu options. Yeah. Just say, like, if this Pokemon is a, if, is this type, use this move, otherwise use this move. <laughs> just, then, just set it up beforehand and then you can just AFK grind Pokemon. Well, but then the new shared experience system means you don't really have to level, spend too much time leveling stuff up anyway because you just, oh, I want to evolve this thing. It's like, fine, just shove it in a high level, shove your low level crappy Pokemon in a high level party, get a billion experience yeah, but that's in how it one always fight. Works with XP share. Yeah, XP share is weird though. But that, that's the, the only real question about XP share is like, it doesn't, XP is, is completely irrelevant. What matters is the IVs. What IVs are they getting from that fight? Oh, uh, right. When you said IV, or like, EVs, yeah. not IVs. IVs yeah. are set. Yeah. EVs are the one you get. IVs made it sound like a person. Old Calibur just suddenly turns up. Yeah. With these IVs just rocking around the wild. And apparently, area. the person I was talking to about it says that now, because in Y, which was the last one that I played, they had the mini games that let you grind EVs. Right. Because. Before that, was this the Pokemon Pleasure Games or whatever they were? No, I think they they were like these weird football stadium things. Oh, you right. Pumped a bunch of footballs around. But like before that, you had to when you were grinding EVs, you had to just fight one specific type of Pokemon over and over. 
So if you were like, if you wanted speed, you had to go find where rapid dashes are and then only fight those, and then you only get speed EVs out of those, winning those fights. But when they introduced the mini games, it was like, okay, now you can just pick the speed mini game right. and just do that. Now apparently you you can just like basically send po- it's a bit got a bit Assassin's Creed. Yeah, there's you can a just send your Pokemon away, thing. and apparently that gets them specific IVs, maybe, but apparently it's not very well defined yet, or people haven't you know back engineered the system to work out what the actual values are yet. Didn't they start exposing some of that though? Well, yeah, that was games. the whole point of those mini games. Was right. where, when they reached that point, it was just like, yeah, we're just going to fucking tell you what the numbers are, and then you can just. <laughs> So if, they, so if they step back from that, so you don't see what the numbers are. Anymore. I don't know. Like st- I think you still see the stats. Sure, like, but that's but, always there. Yeah, but the, like how they actually. But they have that. They have the circular display thing, don't they? Where the points go further out depending on the stats. I oh, think that right. also shows the EVs in that. Okay, and like every every time they level, obviously you just see the numbers go up. Oh, well, yes. That, that's dependent on the IVs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but at this point, it's just like sometimes they display. It's, whenever they walk something like that back, like the mini games, where that now it's now they've gone back to a slightly less direct way of getting EVs. It's just like don't. I mean, just fucking give us the ability to. That's all anyone. That's all the hardcore ever actually want is precision. You just want the exact numbers. You don't want any vagaries. <laughs> no vagaries. That's why six eight six. Five or six IV dittos are the most important. Well, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't be happy if the, uh, is it the NFL player rankings in Madden suddenly went to like <laughs> vagaries rather than oh you're a ninety seven, <laughs> or like they'd go to a good ish. Yeah, but you can't control those numbers in Madden. That's the problem with Pokemon. <laughs> you want those numbers to be exactly what you want them to be. You have to construct a very specific team with very specific stats. It's not natural. None of that is natural. <laughs> the whole <laughs> idea of Pokemon. Yeah, I don't know. Pokemon looked like Pokemon when I saw it. Yeah, pretty much. I quite, I do kind of like the wide, the wide, wide, wild, the wide, wild stuff. It's like I don't know. It seemed it seemed like a fairly neat way of representing it. It you know rather than just wandering around in grass until something goes. Blah, 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 blah. Well, apart from you can still do that, I guess. I mean, you still can, but there's little indications that there's something in the grass around you. Sure, but well, that's no different from being a random fight, really, is it? Well, no, because <laughs> the you can run away from it. Randomly. You can run away from it. <laughs> sure. If, if you can, if you sort of know this patch of grass isn't what you want, but there's something visible that you want in it as well. Yeah, I guess. You know, that kind of stuff's kind of neat. Uh, and I like the way it sort of presents that stuff as well. It's like it's a shadow comes out of the grass, and then it's like... <gasps> <laughs> Almost like a "Who's that Pokemon?" kind of reveal. Well, they kind of did that in yeah. Sun Moon. Oh, did they? Yeah. And actually, I think they may have even done that way back in like Black and White, like the, when you had specific Pokemon that only appeared sometimes. You'd see them as like a black shadow in the grass. Oh, right. So you had to move to that specific tile. Hmm. Well, that or was that to do with shiny hunting. I don't remember. It was something like that. There was a way to make things specifically appear in specific places. Hmm. There's like color variants now as well. That's shinies. Are they shinies? Yes. Because they're not shiny. They're they just... they do shine at the start of battle. <laughs> then oh, they just look okay. like a different colored version uh, of the same thing. Didn't really notice that. They just look like what was it? This one that looked like a hippopotamus. One was gray and one was like sandy. Oh, there might be different versions of some Pokemon. I don't yeah. remember that. I think the hippopotamus one. I don't remember that having a second version. So that might be new. Maybe that's a Galar version. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Didn't see much different other than the color. Well, sure. If they do have different coloured versions, then they probably don't have any specifics attached to them most of the time. It sort of make a bit of sense, right, that they could occasionally have different coats. <laughs> well, that would have been like, again, if we want to imagine a world where Pokemon was just better overall, having variants that aren't, that that aren't, aren't just one species. of two things yeah. or whatever. <laughs> make a, like, a randomly generated texture map or something. Mm. <laughs> Actually, they did do that one time. There's one specific Pokemon from like Ruby, even back on the GBA. Where it had like markings on its body that were like a random blotchy red pattern, and those were like random. Oh, interesting. they were randomly generated based on I think the Pokemon stats. Oh, that's kind of cool. So even back then they did fear, but like that's the one time with that one Pokemon they've ever done yeah, that. <laughs> that's pretty neat. I wonder if they um well and the Unones, I suppose that doesn't count. They're, they're separate. Yeah. They're all separate. Are they all separate? Yeah. What? 
They don't change four or anything. You catch 26 of them. Oh, but I thought like once you caught one, there's just like, yeah, you've caught Uno and great. Well, for for the main people of the sure. But if you're going back to like gold and silver, if you wanted to get all twenty six of them, they they you know it recorded as which of the twenty six you had. Oh God! <laughs> Haven't seen, have the unknowns been in any game since? The, like there must have been. They probably in a couple of. Them. Well, I mean, they're technically in all of them up to this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were doing the national decks, but it's like I don't I don't remember ever seeing them. Well, like... no, no one would want them because they're shit. They only have one <laughs> move. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that's where they should go and rebalance the game. Then, like, not about make make the poopy ones useful. Well, I mean, if again, if you're going to cut things out of the Pokédex, those are the ones you should start with, right? Get, all, the, all the shitty ones that are totally useless. <laughs> Just make them, but get rid of but, Ditto. But, no one ever uses it for anything apart from breeding. <laughs> but then it's useful. Yeah, but only for you need like some other Pokemon to take on that role. The only reason Ditto is used for breeding is because it can breed with everything, because that's the whole point of it. <laughs> that's the idea of a Ditto, yeah. But they could easily come up with some other... Fuck it, just just, just, just go... Let's just bring Pokemon up to the modern age and just, be, just go genetic engineering. Just, like, just have Pokemon breed with nothing. <laughs> and then that's the um, Team Rocket equivalent yeah, that's would how we be got the, exactly. They'd be the anti-GMO people, would they? Well, no, they'd be pro. They'd be <laughs> they pro. Want, oh. They want more Mewtwo's. <laughs> right. Because wasn't there at one point like a, a a Team Rocket where their MO was like animal cruelty? <laughs> right. They were like, stop stop enslaving the Pokemon. Well, they, yeah, that was black and white. They had the, I don't even remember what that team was called, but the, and the like main, like not the, like they had their, the sort of rival trainer in that game was part of had been sort of tricked into being part of that team because right. he thought he was helping the Pokemon, but of course secretly they weren't actually helping the Pokemon at all <laughs> because that's what the bad guys always do. Naturally, even when they seem good, they're bad. <laughs> Is there a bad team in this one? Where's well, that team? Yell the stupid oh, punk yell. guys. Team, right. team football hooligan slash yeah. Uh, yeah. slash skinhead. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I wasn't overly good, like from what I've seen of it, like the whole fake Britishness of the thing is kind of it's kind of off putting in a way. It's like, oh, this is what you think of us kind of view of Yeah. But well, it's weird when they did like France, they just didn't French it up enough. And I think was... there's a bit of that here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like it's not British. like some of the house designs look okay and you wander into someone's living room or whatever and it looks Oh yeah, I've been in houses like this. <laughs> there's a little bit of that going on. Um or, you know, you can go to Bath. Mm. Bath is in that game. It's not called Bath, obviously, but it's got, obviously. A, it's got a Roman Bath just right there. <laughs> or maybe Roman. <laughs> maybe Roman, yeah. Whatever history happened in the Pokemon universe. Pokemon. <laughs> Probably built by Pokemon. Some ancient ass shielded Pokemon. There's a guy in Hawaii who lives for 3,000 years, so apparently humans existed for at least 3,000 years. What's the guy? Yeah. There was, it's a dog thing. Like, okay. He becomes immortal because of reasons, and then his Pokemon dies, and then, then he mo- mopes around for 3,000 years, basically. <laughs> <laughs> He's a moping man. Oh, I'm a moper. He's a moper. And that's the Pokemon segment, I guess. Yeah. Okay. None of us have played oh. it. We've just seen bits of it well, and heard things. Yeah, yeah. The, and the other takeaway I will I, I, I have from it is I think the music sounds bad. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> someone pointed out to me that someone uh, I forget where it was on online, but someone described it as and I think this is quite harsh. They described it as a bad OC Remix album. Sure. And I'm like, oh, that's a bit, it's a bit harsh on OC Remix. Oh, it's a bit close to home there. <laughs> <laughs> Just... You're only on good OC Remix albums. Uh, so that's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, that one Toby Fox track sounded okay, but I don't know where that appears in the game. So, <laughs> Right. I don't know, it's just something about like the instrumentation. Like sure. it's, it's mostly the same stuff that you've always been hearing. But yeah. It's just... The instrument it sounds weird and cheap and kind of... I mean, it worked for, like, 
Golden Sun Dark Moon, where they still had those GBA ass sounding instruments even on the right, DS. Yeah. It was just like this kind of still works. I think it's like t- yeah, it's it's like it's uncanny valley music, right? <laughs> like in that they're using like better plugins and better sound sources, but they're just put together in a not as if quite... they only had four channels. <laughs> yeah, or or not even that, just like they're they're not mixed together professionally or they're not used nicely or mm. they perhaps should have had slightly more expensive instruments that they chose you know it's odd so yeah it's not um, should have just gone orchestrated then <sighs> maybe i don't know if that would work entirely for the battles or go the other way just go like well, they should have. They should have picked. Gypsy. Or perhaps they should have. Like, this is where they should have brought the British in. Is like, is this like a knock at like, like what they think on pop music's like? Uh-huh. Like, there's this super cheap and tacky. Well, that's probably accurate. Um, but like, they could have gone like Britpop or something. Like, let's have let's have all the Pokemon. <laughs> so, so many, many Pokemon. Pokemon. Appropriate. <laughs> Except also not appropriate. I still can't hear pork grinds in that song. <laughs> Get some exercise. Sounds like pork life to me every time. <laughs> you should cut down your pork life, mate. That's so good. Oh. I can't hear anything else. I've tried. <laughs> it's, it will always be pork life to me. Yeah. I mean, maybe oh. it is pork life. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Who knows? I mean, the song is called Park Google Life. Google the so lyrics. It, it would make sense. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, have we got any random for this week, or, or are we going into into news? Um, What's been going not. on? That might, have, that might have been the random. Talking about Pokemon was random. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon was pretty random. Could have a Star yeah. Wars section. We usually have one of those. <laughs> I don't think we need one of those yet. The film's coming. No, I the wanted to coming. talk briefly about the, the TV show. Madame Dan, Mallory did. didn't. It's pretty good. So far, I think it's probably almost certainly going to be better than the film. <laughs> Although the film could be good, but as we discussed, but uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. I was quietly confident, um, but like it's not what I expected because mainly because like obviously it's like the flagship thing for Disney Plus, and so I thought they'd have to make tons of it, you know, like twenty-two mm. hour-long episodes. But it turns out there's eight episodes, and the first one's only half an hour. The first two are only half an hour each. Uh, mm. So it's quite restrained, which I think works well. Yeah, that's fine. Um, There's nothing as... wrong with making a mini series. No, it's like it's a mini series. Yeah, exactly. But with like quite so- short little chapters. Uh, so it's basically one long film in that sense, anyway. But uh, it's, uh, it's working for me. Um, it's uh, very much Western influenced. I, the soundtrack is growing on me, so definitely uh, uh, check it out. The memes are strong. I hadn't realized this until I watched the third episode, but already there are some good memeage. Um, All you need is Baby Yoda, apparently. Well, it's not just Baby Yoda. I mean, but Baby Yoda is a big part of it. Uh, th- like, there's a character in the first two episodes uh, when, um, who says, like, I have spoken. <laughs> and that was the original meme. And then the Mandalorians have a catchphrase, which is, this is the way. So everyone switched from I have spoken to this is the way. <laughs> I wonder what the next one will be. And this is the way is quite good. It's a lot better than um, So Say We All or something like that. Yeah, right. So Say We All. This is the way. Because they're setting up the Mandalorians like sort of Klingon style as like a warrior culture, but with their own twist, obviously. Because most people watching it won't know anything about Mandalorians, which is fair enough, because I don't think what where is the Mandalorian stuff developed? In the like the Clone Wars TV show? Something like that? I don't know. because well, I, I don't really know. It's got to be been in at least a couple of books at some point, I think. Yeah, but they all got decanonized, didn't they? Oh yeah, like, that's why they, the old, the old <laughs> they were in some book at some point. Yeah. There's some stuff in the Kotor games, but that's so long ago, like three thousand years ago, that um I don't know if uh, that has much influence on it. Um, but yeah, it means they get a relatively blank slate to set up what the deal is with Mandalorians. Because the thing about Boba Fett is he's not a Mandalorian, right? He just has the armor. I think that's supposed to be true of the main character in, in this, despite him being called the Mandalorian. Hmm. 
so that's being is revealed. it one of these cases where they don't take his helmet off yeah so he's played by yeah. played by pedro pascal from narcos and stuff uh, but he never removes his helmet, at least not so far. And they make a big deal about that. But pre- presumably he will eventually. But uh, um, he's not supposed to, and he really doesn't, really doesn't want to. Um, which is kind of cool. Does it, he speak it, much? Or is it like yeah. a silent protagonist? Or... Well, not that much. I mean, the, he does, he does speak, but he's 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 a bit of a man with no name, like man of few words type guy, man of action rather than words. Um, but um, I mean, the the most striking thing about it for me so far is it's 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 beautiful, like amazingly well produced and and engaging. But it is like watching a video game story, like he's like the faceless protagonist guy, and he basically does quests, and then <laughs> and then upgrades and then gets the reward from the quest and goes and upgrades his armor with a secret, you know, with a montage like in Skyrim or something like that. And he gets the area of effect attack upgrade, which he then uses on, you know, a bunch of enemies at once. And, you know, it, it's basically a video game, but really good. <laughs> I mean, it would make a great game. I don't know why they never made this game. It was always so obvious. Didn't they try? Wasn't yeah, bounty hunter. bounty hunter. Yeah, I guess that was meant to be. But you know, if they'd done it properly, th- this is basically the dream Star Wars game that everyone had in mind, I think. <laughs> um, but made as a TV show instead. Intriguing. Yeah. I'll start so... watching something called Vinland to go on a completely different tack. Vinland. Vinland Saga. It's a Viking anime. Okay. I've seen two episodes. It's quite well. It's it's very nice looking. From Not Japan, story or from has Norway. happened. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think it's actually from Japan. Everyone's okay. speaking Japanese. Okay. Uh, it's I'm only two episodes in, and I think plot is beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there might be a slow burn. So, how long do we get the world tree? The world I mean, tree that's where it's right, probably yeah. going, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the only reason you make a Viking anime. Yeah, so giant serpents and world trees, and all of everything explodes. I think it's sort of based in reality. Like none of n- n- <laughs> there's been no, there's been no like supernatural occurrences or anything like that. And this apparently, that's not these, how anime works, is it? And, uh, I know, it always I appears know. to be perfectly normal at the start. But some of the characters are like actually named. You know, they're named at least after figures from Viking history, supposedly. So we'll see where it goes. Or mythology or from history. Uh, who knows. There might be one and the same when it comes to Viking. Is Bluetooth in there? Good old Bluetooth. <laughs> no, he hasn't, where has it turned up yet? Do you know he was a Viking king of some kind? Like, to- yeah, yeah. That's that's his, his. The Bluetooth logo is like some rune of his, isn't it? It's oh, right, yeah. Something like that. Um. Uh, yeah, it's like it's Tors and Torfin and half. Tors. There's a half Dan. Half Dan? Oh, half Dan either. Was a half Dan. Yep. <laughs> After. Yeah, it seems alright. Just thought I'd raise it. It was recommended to me by someone at work, and it's like, oh, yeah, seems alright. But, you know, two episodes in anime is nothing. Mm. Could get very bad very fast. Or very slowly, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> get a hundred episodes in, and then you realise it's terrible. <laughs> in London. Do you watch any TV, like anime or anything, Zach, or is it all interactive fiction for you? No, I don't really watch any video things any longer, apart from YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, but that's not, that yeah. doesn't count. I think Finland is on YouTube, but I don't know how legal it is. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of things are on YouTube mm. and, and with questionable legality. Mm. Speak, I guess we can transition into a bit of news that I had almost forgotten had happened. What? The whole YouTube shit that's been going down these last two weeks. Oh, what's, what's going that? on? They got sued by the FTC oh. for... Yeah. for Collecting Copper, data right? of children. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? But the thing is, so the, basically, what you see if you look at YouTube, uh, YouTube of people making videos about this is everyone's in a giant panic about how their all their shit is going to get fucked up <laughs> because that's pretty much what <laughs> happens every time anything goes wrong with YouTube. Right. Yeah. So basically, they YouTube had been collecting data as they do because that's what Google does. And they they got hit by the FTC about collecting data from children, hmm. and so YouTube's sort of solution to this is basically to to say, okay, 
in, in that case, we'll have to make sure that we don't accidentally collect data for children by making it so that we don't put personalised ads on content for children. Well, right, right, because I noticed they changed their uploader recently, and it now has an option to say, yep. are there children in this video? Yep. Well, I don't in know the about video. are there That's children. Different. Or, the there's, audience, also, yeah. there's a different, yeah. There's, yeah, I the, think there is a different... both, I think. I'm pretty sure there's like, are there children oh, right. in the video? And it's like, is this suitable for it's children? Suitable. The suitable for children thing is the one that everyone's worried about, because basically... Because it used to be the explicit content button, yeah. basically. Basically, Wait, what do, do you swear? Basically, what it's saying now is like if you if you check that box to say this content is suitable for children, you are essentially just sacrificing ninety percent of your ad revenue because you don't really? get personalized ads any longer, and those are most ads on YouTube. But surely you just get ad revenue from the random ads. Yeah, but those like... aren't worth as much, basically. Yeah. Oh, they're not targeted. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've seen about this because I follow that guy who does like Lego reviews. So obviously he's, he's yeah, all kid he's kind friendly. Of <laughs> yeah, and so then the secondary layer to this problem is that like, what is? So you just need to do cussing Lego reviews. Well, exactly. But the, <laughs> like the trouble is that like the the whole concept of what is like attractive to children that would that like what in what in your video makes it so you have to check that box is so incredibly vaguely defined especially by the FTC which is the whole point of this thing right. that like no one is no one knows what they can do and what they can't do any longer without potentially get, and the trouble with is that now that the FTC is like on the case exactly like their eye has been turned towards YouTube for a moment now they're basically <laughs> the saying eye that, of like, Sauron slash yeah, the FTC pretty <laughs> they're pretty much saying that like each individual video, if you're in breach of what they what they think is suitable for children, and you didn't mark it or you did mark it incorrectly, each individual video you can get fined forty two thousand dollars. <laughs> and this is one of those things where they've basically paid they they some intern has found an excuse to spend his time there at Look the at FTC, YouTube. <laughs> just watching YouTube. And then, um, they, yes, because uh, obviously, YouTube, um, FTC doesn't have algorithms to do it for them. No, no, no. <laughs> they have to have physical people. No, they have, have people because I, I think this. Is, I think they actually do because then they will need to have someone watching it in order to. I don't think they've defined the rule themselves. Well, no, they're gonna have to watch some of this stuff and be like, "All right, where is the line?" Yeah, and it's like they won't know until they've actually like trawled through. And, and the trouble people is, people have been like potentially sentenced or whatever. Like, the, this you this, call this stuff. This law that this whole thing is based on the COPA law is from like the nineties, like very early internet. Hmm. So it's like it's super ill defined, and it's also like out twenty years out of date, yeah. ill defined as well. The thing is, like, if you actually read the law, some bits of it are just completely ridiculous. Like one of the things that the FTC deems appealing to children is the word "yeah." <laughs> Deemed... Like, if you say yeah in this video it might be deemed appealing to children appealing yep okay. that's right. all it requires oh yeah it's not even so... that it's like content intended for children it's just like, like children might want to watch it which that that's where it ang where the angle that i'm seeing things is because like right. video game reviews like children like watching video games everyone says yeah though <laughs> yeah everyone <sure>. ever <laughs> it's like children like watching video games like anyone who lets play minecraft and swears a lot does you might mean, be fucked <laughs> does it, this mean like major nelson's in trouble for his extremely long yeah boy <laughs> probably <laughs> but the thing about it is the thing that i found weirdest about it is when you look into it further youtube if you in order for personalized ads to exist on youtube you have to be signed in obviously because that's where the data is <laughs> coming from gotcha Fork and or cookies <laughs> But in, well, yes, I guess. But in order for like, in order to have a YouTube account, the the like you know when you create a YouTube account, there's a checkbox that's like I'm over thirteen. <laughs> it's wow. like their whole system is designed to not have this problem. It should this this whole thing should actually exist. <laughs> yeah, there's that, and there's but there's also YouTube Kids as well. Yeah, but that's separate. That's not yeah. included in this thing. That that was the whole point of YouTube's Kids existing, wasn't it? Hmm. I guess. The only but the problem is you can't stop kids from just well, like, yeah. A checkbox isn't going to stop anyone. Well, no, but then surely that's how YouTube gets out of this legally, right? Yeah, it's like the checkbox exists, therefore you can't sue us <laughs> because, because the user has falsified their credentials or details about themselves. Yeah, so like I don't understand why this is a problem. It's like if that checkbox exists, then it should actually that should absolve YouTube out of the whole situation. Yeah, I think someone. 
I was watching a video about this theorized that like the reason that YouTube actually got you know fined was because YouTube themselves, when talking to advertisers, have been talking about how many kids watch videos on YouTube as a yeah. like mark to talk to advertisers about how many eyeballs they're getting for right, their children and like if they never it, like they know that children are bypassing that <laughs> that checkbox oh yeah well parents just let their kids watch well, minecraft sure. videos for 12 hours a day you yeah know, that's that's a thing but yeah it's, a, it's their version of cartoons it's a know? whole situation which may in fact not actually matter at all as several YouTube apocalypses have in the past. Mm. <laughs> Although yeah. it has brought out the funny, like, the memes have been like, you, you swear too much, you get demonetized. You don't swear enough, you get demonetized. <laughs> 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 it's like oh. you're, you're basically fucking on either end at this point. <laughs> you can't be a middle ground cutter. <laughs> well, no, you have to be a middle ground cutter. Oh, wait, you have to swear the exact right amount. Okay. Reminds me of you. that Eric Idle song about the FTC. I don't know if anyone remembers that. <laughs> no. He did one. It was from like 2004 or something. So, uh, and he made, but you know, he wrote Always Look on the Bright Side of Life and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. at one point they charged him for uh, swearing, I think, I can't remember, on US TV. And so he wrote a song about it. And it just mm -hmm. goes, Fuck you very much, the FTC. That's Fuck you very much mm -hmm. for finding me. <laughs> No, I think I do remember this. Do you remember that? That? <laughs> yeah. The FTC is, is just American, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, federal. Sure. But it's an American company. So, I mean, they're in their just jurisdiction, I guess. Maybe. Does that mean we're okay? <laughs> like, how does Probably it work? Well, we, we don't scenario. get monetization anyway. So well, no, for us. We, we don't. But, like, I'm just. Uh, oh, like, us. Does... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, is it purely just the ad side? that's like driving all of this then yeah so it's not like whether or not the kids or not will view those videos or have that or see them or be it's the data in general direction not the well, video yeah. content right mm. so it's it's that they're being tracked right and that and therefore selling adverts based on that but i guess even if you stop selling and that's the idea right they're trying to get around it by not showing targeted adverts to, to children. videos they think are for children but that doesn't mm. mean they're not tracking them it's just they're or, not using it. Yeah, know? all being sold. So they just might not be super relevant to that child. They might. They're still being sold stuff, though. So. Oh yeah. Totally. Uh, buy that thing. <laughs> what is it? Oh, no, it looked like a gun or something. They advertise those in America. <laughs> like, <laughs> probably not on YouTube. <laughs> probably not. On YouTube. But yeah, it's a whole situation. But maybe not. It might not actually be a situation at all. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The thing is, like, this is one of those things where it's like, wait a month, and then we'll see what the actual results are. We'll find out whether this matters at all. I've got nothing against YouTube actually just improving their categorization and things to like just stop kids from watching. Yeah, but the money or, or that's the whole problem. That's I know. If you're not making any advertising money, then there's no reason to make those videos. Yeah, it's tricky. A pop them for the love of it, obviously, yeah, exactly. like we do. Yep. We're clearly the best. <laughs> yeah, boy. We can say yeah as much as we want. <laughs> we know who we appeal to. <laughs> About mm, 70 nope. people. <laughs> Five views. <laughs> <laughs> core, we have a core audience. A core audience. <laughs> Mostly me, <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, YouTube drama. I mean... Yep. There is never any end to the YouTube drama. No. Nope. You come out of one ad apocalypse into a different apocalypse. I feel like, yeah, I don't know why people get so excited about, well, I guess I do, but Twitter and Instagram and all of that stuff, and even Facebook. YouTube is clearly where it's at for all the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum bollocks. <laughs> yeah. No, that was when the porn sites took over. Well, that has also <laughs> become the meme on YouTube, where it's just like, okay, when are we moving to Pornhub then? <laughs> we do whatever <laughs> the fuck we want on Pornhub. I have heard stories that, that like that there's a surprising amount of not porn on well, yeah. Pornhub. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, see posts from like Pornhub engineering because you <laughs> on developer channels because it's quite right. interesting. Yeah. yeah, they have like bulletproof. I mean. You Video I mean, yeah, that they have to. They, yeah, presumably they they must, yeah, because they must be pretty enormous themselves. 
I mean, like, own several other, like, it's not just them anymore. It's like they actually own most of the oh, yeah, yeah, they're porn ring now. It's like a whole network of, of sites that are all built on the same foundation, I expect. Yeah. I think I saw an AMA with one of the developers, and it was like, they were asking whether, like, when you're actually working on the site, whether the content is, you know, all placeholders. <laughs> No, yeah, whether you don't oh, see the content when you're working on it. Right. But they don't. Yeah. They just they use the actual content. Because it wouldn't really work otherwise. I think they just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the real question is, do you get to choose which content you yeah, see yeah. while you're working? <laughs> God, do you have to be logged in at all times? Like, just oh, to, okay, <laughs> just like, okay, these are my preferences. Because <laughs> that, you know. You yeah. saw if you if it was something you definitely didn't want to see, that probably would be quite a hard working environment. And then how's that <laughs> data been sold to Google? <laughs> oh, God. This is a deep rabbit hole. <laughs> I imagine it's hard. quite well paid. <laughs> I imagine it probably is, yeah. Wasn't that what, what, what film was that? Was it like um it was a Ben Affleck film where he wasn't allowed to well, he basically made a sort of vow of abstinence to himself, but his job was to like moderate sites for oh, porn great. and things like that. So he was watching a lot of it during his day job. I can't remember what that was. Yeah. Classic comedy. Forty bit. days, forty nights, or something, oh, something like right. that. That sounds awful. Yeah, it went great. Natural. And he was also Catholic, which made it extra worse, or something. <laughs> so it's like. Ugh. I want to say it's been acting. <laughs> <laughs> what other news? Yeah. Got? Not much is the answer. Well, should we talk about the big news? Which one? <laughs> one of two. The VR related one. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's big because of two words in the title. Yeah. And no numbers. <laughs> and no numbers. No numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Half Life Alex. <laughs> Half Life. There's a new Half Life game. A, there is a new Half Life game. Half Life, un- not just a Half Life universe game like Portal Two. A full on <laughs> Half Life game, Half-Life. starring characters from Half Life series, um, full length. Well, supposedly, right? whatever that means. Like eight to ten hours, something like this. Yeah, that's the that's the hope. Um, supposedly, head crabs, zombies, <laughs> City Seventeen, Combine. <laughs> All the all the stuff, but it's Half Life one point five, kind of yeah. In terms of the storyline, it's a prequel to Half Life two, right? Yeah. But it's really like I don't know. I still feel like Half Life one and two are not that well tied together. They're pretty. It, I don't like, think this is going to tie them any more together. Though. No, no, uh, no. I don't it, think it's so gonna, either. It's, it's Alex. No, it's, it's nothing to do with that at all. It's just Alex's backstory in the middle of the stuff that's already going on, right? It's... Yeah. I imagine it must be pretty close to the beginning of Half Life Two. Yeah, somewhat. Impression. I mean, that you can see they're building the Citadel, right? Is that right? Right. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So it must be fairly early on after the um, the what's the core? The war called? The Maybe seven hours war like, or something. You don't know how fast the combine builds it. They probably build quite fast, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, well, that would imply yeah, it would be even sooner. War, that would yeah. make sense. Just chuck it down immediately. Yeah. Um, so the big thing is that, uh, as everyone knew, it was a, it's a f- that Valve were working on full on VR games, right? Yeah. So, uh, what is it? It's compatible with all the systems. Pretty much everything. Yeah. Although it looks to, that it has like features from the Valve Index. You know, some of the more modern yeah. stuff, like finger tracking and stuff like that, is all in there, and yeah. may actually be useful to the point where it begs the question okay what are the ones that don't have some of that stuff going to work like and things like that because obviously they do want to show it with all that with all the all the gubbins yeah exactly um, but, um, yeah good on them for supporting everything and not just vive and yeah but then again vive, like the original vive i suppose is the weak point now right yeah, it is now because it was the first yeah well not mm. the first but it was obviously oculus the first but it was the first pretty good but, one. yeah with, with the 3D controllers, I mean, because the yeah, touch exactly. controllers came quite a lot later from Oculus. So, oh, and it supports like all your 
different movement options and you can play it sitting down and all of this stuff mm. which makes sense as well it has room scale as well so it's pretty much got every kind of box yeah there's elements there. There's elements of that. There's that then beg the question: Okay, how does this work? Are these like a, ser a series of small events? Like well, in that's small what we, rooms? what everyone asks about yeah. every VR like game when they're though. saying it's not just an experience or anything. Like when you create a whole game out of a VR thing, how does it like transition from place to place and all that kind of stuff? Well, okay, but there's one. The really popular example for this is Resident Evil 7, right? Because that's the yeah. one that actually went all in and did, hey, Full we're on. making the whole game VR compatible. But it didn't have to be VR compatible. Anyway, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. And, you know, the swimminess and motion sickness problems aside with doing a whole game like that, hey, it's possible. Someone did it. Um, so I don't I don't necessarily think it's outside the realms of possibility for them to have done like, oh, hey, you could be holding a controller in your hands rather than the wands or whatever, and you move around with the sticks. Or, I don't know, I forget, do the index controllers have sticks on them so you could just have full degree of motion as well? But then if you're doing it room scale-wise, you surely you're discouraged from doing that and moving around the scene. And then how do walls work and all that stuff? Well, I mean, like, the, the obvious way would be like they showed some of those secrets, like where she's hiding behind the pillar, set like recharging her health off thing while shooting. It's just like that's mm. a room scale scene, and then you move after that. Yeah, it's like it's going to be a setup where because I mean, like, in reality, Half Life Two did that a lot in just like the, in a normal game where it just locks you in a room for a while. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess my problem with some of this stuff is like. Uh, at least from a standing up room scale perspective is like yeah the problem with those experiences are you can't have anything solid because you you'll just move through it and that might not be exactly what you want in like a cover based shooting scenario mm, maybe. whereas you know doing something like that sat down makes a whole lot more sense because you can be constrained by the environment because you're not using your legs to move around even then though games like that like have problems with you just leaning wildly then it's like oh I've pushed my head through a windscreen or whatever hmm <laughs> Or did you? I remember, like the early, early, like in early VR, like Project Cars and stuff like that, where you could just stand up inside the car and be like a disembodied head, like miles above. Yeah, and but that's never going to be solvable. No, I guess not. <laughs> not until we can actually have hard light holograms to mm. create an actual environment <laughs> around you. <laughs> or we all just get so accustomed to movement that we can just stop the camera from going. Stupid places. Or full on the haptics. It just shocks you if you bump into a virtual wall. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go I mean, there. So excitement at all? I mean there's people are excited, I think. It yeah, I think there's there's you know, it's it's interesting at the very least, but this is to for as much like, oh hey, they're doing it. There's as much but it's not Half Life Three. No, it's not yeah. even Episode Three. <laughs> but yeah, I think they like, thought that like Half Life Three like a was traditional... just too daunting to actually do. Like, yeah, I mean that's what they've yeah. said. Isn't At it? least they're the, doing the, something yeah. like uh, yeah. probably in that universe, which is good. I like the look of the new character. He's played by Reese Darby. Did you see that from Flight of the Concords? Oh, right. Werewolves, <laughs> not <laughs> werewolves. <laughs> yeah. so. The only thing that's like kind of cool to me about it is just like you know it's a, it's now it's it's half-life 2 but with modern graphics it's like what what yeah. would half-life 2 look like now is so basically like, this game because it's still the half-life 2 universe i, mean, I think everything. it looks uh, it, it looks oddly in like in a it's strange how faithful to the look of half-life 2 it, it, look, it actually does look yeah. even though there is more modern lighting going on some of the facial stuff and how the shadows are being cast across the faces in particular like that's all very modern stuff uh, but, but it uh, looks yeah. like the in, source but in the same breath yeah <laughs> which it is obviously but like it's amazing how you can tell like uh, as these engines get better and better like they don't sort of merge into one fully realistic looking thing do they you can still they have character so maybe we can at least look forward to like half-life 2 remastered i guess mm, i don't <laughs> think remake that, do that game but with the modern textures and graphics and models no they'll probably hand that off to whoever was making black mesa whenever they finish <laughs> <laughs> they're nearly done aren't they with like well i say that for years for literally yes, years. they keep yeah. saying they're just giving to zen yeah, that's the problem yeah well yeah but they're re they're totally remaking zen isn't well, yeah. that's the problem 
Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would. I don't know whether to be excited because, like everyone else, it's like, am I going to have the equipment to play that? Probably not. Am I going to get that equipment no. just for that? No, probably not. I mean, here's here's the thing: the Rift S kit and the has come down a lot. Like, from if you think when VR launched, you were talking mm. like probably nearly a grand minimum to get in. I mean, now you can get an S with touch controllers for four hundred pounds. You know, it's it's. The price has halved since VR became a thing. Uh, yeah, that that's good. That still doesn't account for the two grand of PC. Sure, <laughs> that's true. But then they're doing the like the quest is the interesting one because there's this supposedly like okay, so the quest is interesting simply because it's like its own standalone thing, right? And the technology in it is approximately the same as the S. Um. Uh, but yeah, they, I think they said a little while back that they're actually probably going to be adding um, the ability for the S to just stream video from your PC, right? So you can actually wire it in and just use it. Like, sorry, not the the Quest will be able to be wired to a PC, hmm. so you can use it like an S. And it's like, oh hey, best of both worlds. <laughs> you can have a standalone machine, and you can have a full-on headset. And supposedly inside-out tracking is now good enough that that stuff works. So you don't need to set up lighthouses and that stuff. It's coming. It's coming, man. Get in there. PSVR 2. Well, we'll then, see with then the PS5 what happens there. Then it'll become, then it'll become big again. Because, you know, PSVR's done pretty well. Yeah. As a, you know, because it was a cheap entry-level VR, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that anyone didn't, you know, you didn't need a PC. You just, Check on your PlayStation. It'll yeah, be fine. I think it's cool. Um, Presumably, there'll be a successor with the PlayStation Five, but it's a way you'd off. I think, yeah. <laughs> or at least it will continue to support it if they don't even make a new one. Yeah, they've said they've said they will support PSVR on the on the, on the new system. Yeah, that would make sense for to launch Half Life Alex on there. They've they've yeah. had a collaboration yeah, in the past, haven't they? Gave new they have. to Sony. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly because Gabe Newell was doing it because he was trying to spite Microsoft, right? Yeah. He was pissed off with him. In the most slight way, it would be <laughs> like, we're going to use you as a platform to bitch at Microsoft. <laughs> to bitch yeah, at Microsoft, was, yeah. There was some weird stuff going on. That was all true until Orange Box, right? Because they put out 360, but the Orange Box came out on 360. Yeah, but that was before but, that, though. That was right? before. Yeah, it was yeah, to do with Steam and Windows. And, yeah, and because, that. well, that Sony were more open to the idea of letting you log into your Steam account on a, on their platform. Mm. And Microsoft very much weren't. Well, and the patches um, was the other big sticking point, right? It's why the TF, TF2 on Xbox didn't get virtually any updates because of Microsoft's well, whole... In fairness, neither of them did, well, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft's one was worse. <laughs> the whole, like... Um, you know, well, the cert. You know, yeah, the cert for the patches mm. and all the money you had to spend for that. But Gabe was thinking, was worried probably with you know his own like valves uh steam in mind obviously but that the microsoft was trying to do an apple and make windows like a walled garden with an app store right and that yeah everything that was the reason that, that was the reason the and that was the reason uh, for the that. linux right the steam os and all of that which obviously yeah. failed but both things mm. failed the microsoft walled garden failed and and steam os failed so you know we're back where we were in the beginning Pretty much, apart from you, we've got things like Game Pass and everything, and the strategy of everything launching on Windows and Xbox at the same time. But I don't think that that doesn't seem to be negatively impacting like Steam or anything like that because they haven't got yeah. that many games. I mean, there's like a hundred, but like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I know what you mean like these and all Microsoft exclusives will come out on Game Pass and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and you know it has the problem where things cycle in and cycle out of that service relatively quickly. Um, you know, but, but if you've got the app on your phone, you, at least it tells you, "Hey, these games are going to leave the service." Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, Which, yeah, you know, is That's is a problem. Fine. I think. I, well, it, I don't know. I I kind of I kind of wish that wasn't a thing that things didn't have to cycle out quite so frequently as they do. But I just um, mean like because you could pop- be plan you could be planning to play something and then it'll be like, and oh, it's it leaving in a month. Well, it's the same with like, Netflix. Well, I might as well it? not. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, prime, they- prime is that problem too. Like Windows has remained open to the point where the real competition to Steam is not a closed system, but like Epic coming along or whatever, yeah, which is good. Or, or Humble or Gog or Discord. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, that's. I think it. It hasn't. Nothing's really changed apart from. So in that sense, so I think everything is 
worked out fine in many ways. I mean, Zeg, you may be annoyed that Epic have come along or whatever, but and they're crappy, but <laughs> you know, it's all they, fine. They just really. need to fix this, fix this stuff. The thing is, is, it can't fragment that far because then no one knows which service to use. It's it's about to happen with Netflix. Everyone uses Netflix, and a few people have Amazon and, and Amazon. There's like mm. two, but like soon there's going to be like you know ten or twenty of them. Well, there's already quite there's already loads in this country alone, right? Because you've got yeah. Sky. As, if you want to factor Sky into that, you've got BT Sport and factoring in yeah. Virgin, Now yeah. TV, yeah. Uh, all with their own TV, various forms the one, of yeah. TV. But it's going to get much worse in that sense, and it, it's no one's going to buy all of them. Well, some people might, but like it's you know it's, the, the, people think yeah, there's like you infinite can't watch money that much. No, exactly. Well, at least I can't. I can, I can barely I think watch it's a matter of all the things I want to watch a lot, though. It's like the one thing that you want. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, exactly. Disney Plus adds, adds another wrinkle. That's annoying. Well, that'll just keep going because yeah, they'll pull things from the current ones to put on their own, like all the H- all the HBO do their own stuff. Don't yeah, they? but they've always done their own thing. Like that. Yeah. Like now, TV has HBO, right? Because it's Sky and they have the license. Yeah, Sky Atlantic <laughs> gets HBO stuff. So, Thanks but the, similar with games, but I think Steam's pretty strong. Um, PlayStation stuff yeah, works yeah, fine. No, 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 Xbox no and Microsoft stuff works fine. It's all, it's all fine. It's all fine. Yeah, we're we're not as fragmented. The only thing that the, they have to worry about in the PC space, at least, is that you know, cross plat. If a game comes out on PC, they should really be designing that game to be cross platform across all the PC platforms, not all the game stores. That that's that's the fragmentation I don't want to see. Like if I've got something on Epic, I want to be able to play it with a Steam user. If I've got something on the Windows Store, like it, that that's the stuff that doesn't that makes less sense to me. So yeah. so everyone just stays in Steam. You know that's yeah. why everyone would stay in Steam is because that fragmentation is, yeah, not only likely but happening. Um, I would definitely get stuff in Steam over uh, on PC over other. System um, stores. Yeah, if myself. I was going to buy it, then yeah, well, of course, that. that's why Epic are doing their thing. <laughs> yeah, but they, but they need to Epic need to make sure that they don't fragment those that user base because otherwise they're not going to win. But their their whole goal is to fragment the Steam user base <laughs> into their user base. But no one's going to. Yeah, that's what I'm, but the point I'm trying to make is no one will play on Epic unless a it's an exclusive, yeah, which you know that, that, that is their play. <laughs> Um, or you know, it, although you give players a reason to play it there over everywhere else, which they haven't done yet. You know, if if Rocket League, um, if Rocket League's a bad example because it's already got pretty decent crossplay. But if Rocket League like went in and would only Epic Store compatible versus like st- and the Steam user was a whole different user base, it's like no one would buy into a new store that late in a game cycle. Like the community is not going to move to it. Well, it's not. They're like, not going to buy in to like a whole like buy a new version of the game to move it. Exactly. There. But if yeah. if it was if you could just if your Steam key transferred somehow onto Epic, like if you could disable it off of Steam and move it onto Epic, then maybe people would move if they preferred Epic for some reason. Not that there's any reason to, but in this theoretical like, well, universe, mm, you know what? That's a bad example because that's like thinking about it because it's like yeah, that's. That's a game that's already out and has turned up somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, let's try like okay, say Titanfall three comes out. Yeah. And it's on Origin and Steam and Epic for some reason. Yeah. Um but none of them are cross play. It's like that sucks. But it sucks, like, but you're not going to know. Like there's you would it's um, like Well, if your friend base goes in and goes, Yeah, I bought it on PC and they're like, Which PC? <laughs> like Well, sure, yeah, but that's, that's not true. that like necessarily that different to say which console <laughs> when multi console games come out because that's happened in the past. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's 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 definitely a thing, but there's I don't know, I feel like certain friend bases tend to be more skewed towards a specific console in general, like your crew will be on PlayStation well, yeah, or your that, crew that's will be on Xbox. Why? Because they like, play the games on that on that system with everyone else, yeah, and that becomes less of a problem. But if your crew is PC. Then suddenly everyone, if that becomes, I don't know, that feels trickier. 
just the same that people don't want that. <laughs> but that's why we're pissed off about Epic trying to be exclusive. Yeah. Because we don't want to have to have different groups in different launches. Just make sure games are cross-play. That's all I'm saying. That solves it. Well, for PC games, it always seems like it's just there's no. It would it would be more work to not make it cross-play, right? Because it's on the really, it's just a server at the end of the day at some level. To a point, like so. The problem is, is like uh, for for true cross-play, like a game has to have its own user system, right? Yeah. Or like the developer has to have its own user system. If they don't, then it's for like indie developers or someone like so someone with slightly smaller budget wanting to make a multiplayer game, they can fall back and use the Steam systems to provide friends and yeah and connectivity and chat and all that stuff, which means they're systems they don't have to build. But this um, is that, and that's where the problem begins. Yeah, but that's not really the problem, is it? Because then those those indie type developers who don't have the ability to make their own back end are just going to be forced to use Steam to make their game and then it'll only be on Steam. It's like it's not <laughs> <laughs> But then I don't know if that's true either, because then they want to be on as many platforms as yeah, possible. Yeah, but they don't have a there. choice. It's not what they want. It's yeah. what they're capable of doing. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. I don't know if that's really how it plays. Otherwise we wouldn't see so many games on Switch. But <laughs> well, I mean who knows what back end Nintendo has. Yeah, none. <laughs> yeah, apparently. But <laughs> They somehow people make it work. Speaking of hardware, I almost bought a Steam controller. Yeah, I tried. In what? fairness. Why? Because well, we, they went down to £4. Yeah, they're not making them any longer, so they were just ah, getting rid of all their stock. They had, they had a fire sale. So they had a 90% off sale. Mm. But it, the stock went. Like, the stock went while it was in my basket. Yeah, that happened to me as well. I, I added I, it. Let me add it. But I don't know. Then, I don't know how long that yeah. announcement had been up for because I woke up and it was already there, and I was just like, oh, half a day, I think. I'll just put that in my basket, and then it, the, while I was reading reviews about the Steam controller, it just disappeared. Oh, that, I didn't. That didn't even happen. I was just. I was just like, oh, I'm jumping on this. Right. Like, like I heard purchase, and I got to the all the way to the 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 finish button, and then it put up one of those giant orange markers saying, "There's a problem." Yeah. And I'm like, what's the problem? It's out of stock. <laughs> yeah. This is the answer. And it's like, damn it. I'm not sure I want one. No, but, you know, but four quid. Been, but yeah, for four pounds, it's like, I'm trying one of these weird things. But yeah, no, it didn't, didn't work out. I could just as easily fix up my Xbox control. <laughs> well, can you though? <laughs> Half of them are just missing rubber. Just the never-ending yeah. saga of Rob's busted ass controllers. Speaking <laughs> of which, I finally, I finally opened up my fresh Xbox 360 for Windows controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, the, the older one is. <laughs> so, what was wrong with your older one again? Well, the older one started disconnect. We were playing, we were playing Rocket League, and it started disconnecting oh, in yeah. the middle of games. Except not like not really disconnecting. Well, at first, it would just like you just lose control for a, a second, like it wouldn't actually disconnect. But then it started actually disconnecting like the usb sound and everything and then, so i like it was so it, and it came and went so i was just like is it really that or is it some other weird shit that's happening with my system because my system does weird shit sometimes <laughs> but then when it did it again on a second night i was like let's just like let's just grab the grab the cable and wiggle it because i mean if, if it is disconnecting it'll be the cable right hmm. so i grabbed the cable and wiggled it it disconnected like incredibly fast over and over like it just went and then the, my system blue screen <laughs> Oh, wow. I was like, well, yeah, I guess that is that then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Conclusive have, proof. Yeah, it could just be the cable or that can or the because the 360 ones have that kind of anti the break to break your console. Yeah, the breakaway, does it? Yeah, but like, it was clearly it was at the controller end of the cable, not the PC end. Because okay. that was the bit I was wiggling. <laughs> I was like, yep, okay, then I guess I'll break out the new fresh controller. Fresh. Nice. Yep. That I bought like what two years ago at this point or something on, on the off chance that they stopped making them and i haven't looked to see whether they have stopped making them so i don't actually know whether that was a good good plan or not I'm scared of buying more controllers at the moment because i have a tendency of just breaking them it seems <laughs> well at x-bone controllers i've, I've broken well, all of them <laughs> yeah well yeah or sync my ps4 controller i'm tempted to, I'm sure. to switch to that but uh, like that controller, uh, you know, the rubber was nearly gone, but it was still clinging on there. It still had some, still had enough that it didn't feel weird or anything. Mm. And then when you got on a new stick, it's like, well, this feels weird now. It's not hella warm. It's not the exact shape of my thumb any longer. 
You know what? Other than the rubber, most of my 360 controllers are still fine. There's like a couple that have a tiny amount of stick drift. Like, you know, if you left it in the middle, like it's not quite centered anymore. Mm. Um, but they're, they're blasting quite well. Considering how much of a battering those things have had. Yes, well. My one must have, my one's like over 3,000 hours of use, probably. I, I would still, estimate at I still, least. I still haven't found anything concrete enough about the, uh, was it the Elite 2s mm. or the Elite 1s for that matter, about whether they have the stick crunch problem. <laughs> It's a very Rob specific problem. Well, I'm not. I'm not the only one that has stick crunch. Well, no, you're like, not the only one. But yeah, it's like you are the one of us who tends. To... I, yeah, <laughs> you are the clench. Yeah, my my thumb is the worst. If our videos of of into the gudgeon are any indication. Yeah, I just, I, it's involuntary. I don't know quite why it happens. I just, uh, I react in a way that meant, makes my thumb push down rather than like the direction of the stick I want to, and it's, yeah. I go into it, and then you can you can break them. The X Bone controllers are quite breakable. It's interesting when even I, the mod, even the newer ones. That's the most annoying thing. It's interesting when I was watching like when Kippers did did some streaming of Rocket League on his Twitch. It's like it's interesting to like you could hear him pushing the button sometimes, mm. and that's always an interesting thing to be like, what what is he actually doing? Like I don't like there seems to be a lot of unnecessary button pushing sometimes. <laughs> Like you only need to push jump jump twice. <laughs> oh right, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. So you've got a bit of a mash going on. Yeah, yeah I don't know. You need one of those um like uh, on fighting game slates. readouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've always thought about those. Where it's like let, let, let's see what people are actually doing. If we could get it's like I I need that to be like just to have a game that would have that built in as a feature, like. Like, if you imagine Rocket League, with the way it saves replays, where it saves all the data. Oh, right. Like, yeah. it even saves which direction people's cameras are facing and stuff. So mm. if, you, if you're if you looking around with the right stick, it even records that into the replay. So you could look mm. at other people's view and see that, what they were actually looking at at the time. Which is cool. Which is cool. But if they could, like, take that and, like, visualize the actual controller as well <laughs> mm. within the replay files. That would be really nice, actually, because that would be useful from a... Uh learning perspective yeah, exactly. as well. I think a lot of games could benefit from that. That would be really cool, actually. I mean, I'm... Because it's, I wouldn't it's be a, that surprised a, if there's actually a mod that does that in Rocket League. It's a discipline thing. It's one of the hardest things to like learn in video games, is to not just freak out with your fingers. Yeah. It's it, it's it's something I only, I only get a handle on, honestly, for a, for a handful of games. Like I don't know, fight playing when I when I bought my fight stick and things like that. Like it, there was something about using the fight stick well, that actually finally didn't... taught me how to be a little bit more disciplined. Well, it's and... because you didn't really know how to use it to start with. So yeah, I sort learned. I sort of relearned bad habits or anything. rather than mashing things out. So I still find like I'm I'm better at it now, but I still find that you know some of my smash timing is a little bit in, too enthusiastic. I'm early with a lot of things. Well, and right. it, like, it's still hard to ever remember that you have tilts. Yeah, yeah oh, <laughs> the, like... tilt, the tilts in Smash are so hard. <laughs> it's like, they're, they're actually really useful, as you remember that they exist and to do them. Yeah. They're so hard to actually pull off right as well. Just... well the tilt, the, it's side tilts that are the worst, because yeah. you're, it automatically makes you start moving. Mm. And that's like so counterintuitive to what you're trying to do. You're trying to stand still and do an attack, not run in place and do an attack. <laughs> In, in fighting game news, I did actually eventually get around to buying myself a copy of Soul Calibur. <sighs> okay, because it went, it went, it went reasonable. Did you get the DLC you wanted? I got the I got the first season. Okay, good. <laughs> because they've announced a, like Soul Calibur must be doing all right for itself because they've announced the season two. Okay, like which is now more expensive than the game itself. <laughs> right. So I'm not buying that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which is fine because all I wanted was Tira. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a good, good excuse to get me fight stick out. Mm. I'm looking forward to that. Um, when Game Pass has an off month, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or when you're done with a million hours of not Fallout, <laughs> yeah, of not Fallout, yeah. of not of not Fallout, yeah. Is that the news then? Uh, uh you remember the PlayStation Five like weird mock-ups that made it look like a V? Sort of no, shape, but okay. Okay, there were these like weird, like 
uh, were they patent docs? I think yeah, I think it was patent that someone then mocked uh, up. Yeah, that made that made this look just look this really awkward V shaped looking thing. We talked about it on the other um, podcast, and like I was making theories about you know cooling. Yeah, yeah, and that they'd, like perhaps the V is there because like all the cooling is in the ridges and the stuff like right. that. And it's like, so these things have surfaced in the wild, and they are the dev kits. Oh, and the, the and the V shape does appear to have a whole shit ton of vents on. So yep. I, I might have been right. <laughs> Probably, but dev kits don't look like the real thing. Always, no, no, oh god, this th- this thing can't be what the end thing looks like because they, they've got little screens on the front of like yeah. like yeah. Of, on of, the, of the points of the V as well. And it's, well, that could be real. Well, they have those on dev kits too, right? Little screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong; it's a, it's it's a real thing, but it's like that's not going to be the actual console. There's no I mean, way. I think it could be. It's so ugly. Or it might not be that color. It might be all black instead of weird gray. But it's so ugly. It's not. Like, it's beyond. And also, it's a V. You know, like five. It's the perfect design. I don't, I don't think they'll. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 don't, I don't even think Sony. Are... But Sony have always been quite, what's the word, reserved with their design. I don't think that's. that's this is way too out there. But then why is it like that in a dev kit? Dev kits have no reason to have any design. It should just be a grey cuboid. Dev kits are just the shape of which they could put the... the, put the yeah, then you're going to tell me that like all those extra vents on the inside of the V are just going to magically disappear in the finished version. They'll go out the sides. <laughs> or out the back. They'll be like tubed or they'll, or they'll actually have designed the design... What's, what's the thing that they put in the, the Scar... Not the Scarlet, the Scorpio. The, the, the vapor, Xbox, chamber. vapor chamber, yeah, they'll get one of those in there, and it will it won't it won't need any of those vents anymore. Well, you probably do, but they can be tucked away somewhere nice. Yeah, I don't think there's any evidence for it looking V shaped. It'll, <laughs> in, it'll in be a black box design. like it always has been. It'll be a black V shape. <laughs> it'll be a V shape. Or well, unless it's like you know how the, like the trapezoid of the of the current PlayStation, unless it's like just the V notch cut in the front. <laughs> Instead, I mean the, the 360 inhale is probably the most wild console design we've had for a while. Well, you can, it wasn't really nearly as like provident that the original Xbox's X was kind of like that. That's, that's, quite, that's quite wild, in fairness. <laughs> The original original Xbox, where it was literally an X. Yeah. Oh right, well, the, the big silver well, one. <laughs> was that actually? Was that a? That wasn't a dev kit. That no, was just that was just like a, a yeah. Mock-up. The the, yeah. the original Xbox dev kits were basically just big ass PC looking things. Well, that, like they were they were silverish like PC cases with like the green Xbox like circle on the front. Yeah. And Xbox in a weird sort of italic font that I don't think they that they didn't clearly didn't keep for the final thing. Um, the PS2 dev kit just looks like a fat PS2. Mm. Like there wasn't anything special about that. Which actually, no, but oh, I need to stop talking because that's an argument for it being a V. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be a V. That's news. Yep, that that's the news. news. It's time <laughs> the whole news. It's time for what you've been playing. Uh. Should we talk about not Fallout, Rob? <laughs> not Fallout. <laughs> we might as well, because it's pretty much all I got. Uh, not, still not done with it. No, I'm still not done with it. Come I'm, on, it's an fairness, RPG. I've, I've had a couple of weeks of like it not being too gamey, to be honest. Uh, so it's been a bit busy. It, yeah, I'm still working, my, still working my way through it. And like, Kitty, I hope your tail isn't setting off the microphone. We will do if it moves any further towards it. <laughs> there you go. Unwrap yourself from it. <laughs> it's inappropriate settle down cat. cats settle down uh <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm still working my way through it it's like so i i was getting kind of bored of it i'll be honest yeah um it's just it wasn't i wasn't finding the dialogue as interesting as i wanted i wasn't finding mm. the mechanics as interesting as i wanted i had the problem i dad with a lot of rpgs i suppose where it felt, felt like it was mechanics rich and yet i didn't need most of them yeah exactly and i was just so, I followed the advice of a one Brad Shoemaker from the Giant Bombcast and put it in hard mode, sure. which you can do at any time. Right. You can just drift it to hard mode whenever you feel like it. And uh, that 
did make things quite a lot better, mm. honestly, because it meant it meant the combat suddenly was a slightly challenging. <laughs> there were there were fights and things where I actually was really struggling to beat them, and it was like a mainline quest, so it's something I had to do. Um, and I was just like, oh, right, I'm not really sure how I'm sp- how I can tackle this. I'm just dying immediately. Now I've put it in hard mode, uh, and so I had to go about it in a slightly different way, plan ahead, like that should maybe take a buff or two, and it didn't really matter in the end in any of that because I just executed things in a specific order that meant the thing I was fighting couldn't fight back, and it's like okay, perfect. i um, but it made me it made me use the like the the tactical time dilation a lot more because those effects are actually now useful to me now. I want them to just be crippled and so they don't attack me for a while, things like that. Uh, you know the status effects you can do, you can time you know if you use it right you can time it to hit weak spots which you wouldn't normally be able to do during where well, you probably could during normal shots but they're more effective during TTD um, and that kind of yeah it just sort of lifted the game for me a bit I was more I was more engaged in that side of it as a result um, I'm still coming across areas where like I I don't know how it does it's like enemy leveling or like I don't know whether it's like actually just leveling enemies to be harder than they are than they should be sometimes or if it's like the level of the enemy you see is how hard it is like if it's just a regular guy versus like a mega guy it's like is that the only difficulty um or if they are actually getting stronger based on area but uh, it feels like i've wandered into a couple of areas where suddenly there's been like a dramatic jump in the enemy's like damage output and it's been like oh god right this is probably somewhere i shouldn't be but I've got a lot of missions that said I should be here. Uh, what do I do? Uh, well, which generally results in I'll come back a little bit later and then get lucky, it seems. <laughs> and there's one area in particular where I think I've glitched my way to, because I'm, I'm really not sure I was supposed to do it this way. Uh, there was a place where I couldn't get into, and I made it, went all the way over the map to this town, which had a bit of, big old closed door in front of it, and I didn't have the credentials to get in. And I was like, oh, well, balls. I can't do any of that stuff then. Uh, so I tried walking around it to see what was around, and there's usually nothing around most of the cities. There's, not like, there's very rarely anything interesting around the edges of them. Um, except what happened was, is it? I was walking around the edge, and it said, landing pad discovered. No. <laughs> and it and it unlocked a landing pad inside the settlement. <laughs> so I just flew my ship over there <laughs> and just un- undocked on in there. And it's like, well, okay, now I'm where I need to be. So I, I kind of jipped that. Well, that was kind of, that was kind of fun in its own stupid way. It's like, there's a landing pad there. We can like it, if it felt more natural in a way, cause it's like the game was just like, I can see a landing pad. Why don't we just land there? Yeah, but then why are you allowed like, to land there? Though? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Uh, yeah, it was. It's had its had its interesting moments of that. I think I've come across finally started coming across some characters that um that don't feel quite so boilerplate tonefully. You see what I mean? The, 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 you know, the, I I sort of said last time that there was a lot of the characters felt like they were written the same way yeah. or behaved the same way. Uh, but I think once you dig into a lot of the storylines in Monarch, as they keep calling it, or Monarch. Is a uh, there are more characters there that break those molds a little bit. There's a there's a couple of moments where I have actually had a proper laugh, like it's, it finally did it, and I'm just like, oh, cool, right, yeah, that's this is where the comedy is. Um, and there's been a couple of, but then it, you know, in, in the same breath, there's been a couple of bits of writing that have just straight up been lifted from other things, <laughs> like uh, I won't go into too much detail. But if you've played The Walking Dead season one, that Telltale game, yeah, there's a sec- section as a side story from that that's just straight up lifted from that. Like I saw it a mile off, and it's like, oh, this is going to be one of those, isn't it? Yep, yep. No, that's exactly how that played out. Yeah, but sometimes that's all, not like that's not that's a, a, like an intentional homage. Not I mean, like... maybe it it could well be like it could be a homage, but it's like a little bit. I was a little. It was kind of interesting. I kind of wanted a twist on it <laughs> a little bit, and then well, it, just, yeah, but, uh, that it would be setting up for what I thought it well. was. I mean, I feel like that's happened plenty in Fallout, where it's just like, although in most of the time in Fallout, it's like 
because it's a weird alternate universe to start with. It's like a weird alternate universe of the thing they're doing a homage on. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of wanted it to set up that way, and then for me, bit, me my smugness going, you know, this is going to be that, isn't it? And then because the, all these characters are acting in a specific way, there's a there's a vibe about this, and for the scene to just be totally not that would be great. Hmm. Um, I, I guess if you haven't played, like, The Walking Dead, you probably won't have that problem like I did, but which is fine. Not everyone played Walking Dead. Um, but, you know, I, for me, it was like, oh, this is all too similar. Please don't be. Please don't. Oh, it is that. Okay. Disappointing. Not a bad thing to crib from, in fairness, but it's still like, oh, you did that thing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just sort of working my way through. I've got a nice hat. It's literally called a nice hat. Big old top hat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think I've still got friggin' tons left to do. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, I feel like I might only be, like, halfway or something. Monarch was big. <laughs> Maybe the following areas aren't so big. Maybe I should start mainlining this a little more. I don't know. But can you? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you I'm need just, the extra levels? I, exactly, yeah. Especially now I'm in hard mode. Do I need? Do I just need to actually be doing all of the, all of the side stuff I'm doing? Uh, I suppose the only other thing I can really talk about this week, and I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it too much, but I think it's all getting out there, is that I very briefly toyed with the... Um, Project X Cloud uh, preview program. Oh, go on. Um, so that only lets you at the moment stream from Game Pass stuff to your phone. It doesn't have right. a, like a browser or a TV or a, don't even think it has a console implementation yet, unless you want to use your own console to stream from. Uh, I think there's an app you have to put on your Xbox if you want to stream from your Xbox to some other device. Um, but I want, but that's not what I'm interested in. I want the full-on cloud stuff. What's that all about? And I can say that under good conditions, it works with a noticeable bit of latency. <laughs> you know, you know, it's exactly what you think it is. Is all like, is all I can really add to this. It seems to work. Full stop. But if you're playing something like I tried it with Bloodstained and Soul Calibur Six, you know, some things that I have some timing requirements, hmm. or you want it to be responsive. And it's like, yeah, you know, it didn't feel responsive enough, really, for me to be playing Bloodstained when I'm so used to how it feels on a real thing. But, uh, but uh, if I was probably playing Outer Worlds through it, I reckon it would probably be all right. I think for certain games, it's going to be absolutely fine. So that's what we, what everyone said about those streaming services, and then for some reason the people making the streaming services have seemed to decide to hitch their wagons to games that are exactly the wrong kind of yeah, games. Yeah, let's, let's play Doom. Let's play yeah. Assassin's Creed. Well, Assassin's Creed, you could probably get away with. Maybe, I guess. That's a bit, that's a bit spongy. There's a, yeah, there's a bit of timing on like, yeah. combat, I guess, but not that bad. I mean, it, it, it worked pretty well. There was a couple of moments where I had a couple of hitches, like in the in the in the video signal, but it wasn't wasn't enough to disrupt it too much. Um, I, I guess the annoying thing is that on Android, at least the thing, if things would get notifications would get away a lot, and if you interacted with the notifications, like just to clear them or something, it, it would cause the app behind to have a momentary freeze. But hey, this is early days, right? It's, yeah, it needs, yeah. A, it needs a do not disturb or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there are ways to put it into like whatever the rest, the suspend state, right? That the Xbox has games would go into that state and then the app wouldn't necessarily know that they had gone into that state. So you'd have to come out and go back in, but then it would remember exactly where you left off. So it's got some of that going on and it's like, yeah, but yeah, uh, promising, but you know, the classic problems that is, is there. It's like, it's not as snappy as if you were playing natively. Um, the thing with all of the, with all of this, with the stadias, with the X clouds, with whatever, is that you want to that you want the game to be playing to be not be possible on something you can own at home, right? You want to be playing on some mega supercomputer somewhere that's making the most amazing looking thing that can't possibly be done. Otherwise, it's like well, I might as well be playing this at home because it'll be better.
But it makes more sense than Stadia, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. You think? Because you can have Game Pass and have the access to those games. Yeah, that's then true, you yeah. can actually own games, I guess. Kind you, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to buy your games again. That was the Stadia news of this week, where they they were like, oh, these games are free to put this ever. And it was literally pretty much the games that people had already just been buying. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> like Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed are free as ever, and everyone was like, no. we literally just bought those. God damn it. Oh, why, did, why didn't you just launch that with your founder's pack as well, just like from the start? But now they're getting, now Google is like, oh, we'll just give you refunds if you already bought these games. <laughs> Which is, you know, I guess that is the solution, but great but then, job planning ahead, I guess. Is like December going to go away and then they not have access to those games? Or are they just getting them for free because they are on, the, on Stadia in December? Or. Like yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a permanent thing. Like, yeah, presumably it must be if they're going to do refunds for people who bought them. You know, <laughs> unless they're just like doing a like a reset. Be like, if you actually want to buy these games when they are not free, then you can do that then. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, yeah. You, otherwise we're just going to refund everyone blanket. Yeah. So, yeah, Stadia still strikes me as a. W- I don't think their model works no. yet. At least not at the prices. <laughs> not at the price of actually owning a game that you don't own. There's a lot of stories, wasn't there? It's not actually like not half the stuff that's running on Stadia isn't even like you know the supercomputer problem either. It's like it's running on a PC version that's like set at medium. Mm. Like, it's not even like a high powered machine you're getting the result out of. It's like an average machine. And it's like, well, what's the. Maybe, or maybe someone argued it's like, yeah, but they're getting it for a video feed anyway. So it's going to be a well, then, then substandard. People were, then people were like, this video stream that claims it's 4K actually isn't. <laughs> yeah. There's that. There's that. Because some of the games don't actually play at 4K, but the video stream is 4K, if you see what I mean. Mm. So it's like the actual game isn't rendering at 4K. Like I think their Red Dead implementations just running at straight 1080, so there's no way of getting 4K out of that version. I think Mortal Kombat runs at something above 1080, but not quite 4K. With so people have been saying, yeah, Stadia seems like a mess. Yep, just continues to seem like they weren't ready, and yeah. then they just put it out. <laughs> Forced to. And some Google executive was just like, yeah, put it out. It's holiday season. Put it out. Yep. You can't. You can't have another year. Mm. Not even financial. <laughs> Not even March. Yeah. <laughs> there's not enough kit to actually get in, even if you wanted to. Wow. Well, no, you've true. got to wait. Got, there's a waiting list now. I'm going to stop talking. I'm done. Okay. Not that you talked that much, but okay. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I played Brawl Brothers on the, on the SNES store on Switch. <laughs> Was it the vital, Super SNES thing? Vital game news. It's, it's a it's a beat em up. Yeah, I got stuck. Not because it was hard, but because I literally didn't know where to go in a beat em up. So you got like the left and right emulator thing on Switch. Don't you need the online for that? Yeah, I've got online. Oh, yeah, you, Rob, you Rob got online for Tetris, maybe apparently. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I got it. I got it primarily because it was like when last Splatfest was happening. Yeah, so. Rob wanted to be get in for the last of the last Splatfest, even though it wasn't the last at that time. It was like one more after that one, wasn't it? Oh yeah, there was one more. But like, <laughs> but, but whatever was their last shebang was actually really cool. Yeah, it was like the greatest hits of Splatfest, and it was really awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've got I've got a Switch Online account now, and mostly but, for Tetris. Yeah, uh, primarily for Tetris ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> right, cool. But it gives you the whole virtual console yeah, you thing. Get, you get the NES, the NES and SNES library thing, which they haven't extended yet. The SNES library hasn't had anything new. Like mm. you remember when the NES one comes out, they just like battered it with with games for a while. Quite a lot easier, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, <laughs> clearly. But still, the, the SNES one hasn't had any updates at all. Since it came out, as far as I can tell, has been out that long. Um, true. It's been what a month? Now? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a little while. Yeah, that's not out long. But yeah, it's, not, it's it's already not not nearly as. And they already put the ones that you care about on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, true. That was the important trick. A lot, of, a lot of the Nintendo big hitters are already there. They're holding back Star Fox too. <laughs> There's a reason for you to buy this nose classic, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a different selection of games. It's not the same the stuff that you get on the SNES Classic. But 
Plus he's Mario World and Mario Kart, so you know. And Super Puyo Puyo too, or whatever it is. Awesome. It's a good version of Puyo Puyo. Unfortunately, it reminds me that Mean Bean Machine is actually kind of the inferior version of Puyo Puyo. Of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> the reskin of a Puyo Puyo. Game. Yeah, and they only skinned it once. Is the thing like the SNES one has like there are different like borders. It's like you, Mean Bean Machine just has that one like yeah. underground theme for some reason. Yeah, and the and that one surface scene for the cutscene. Yeah, <laughs> standing in front of Robotnik's weird lab. There's, there's I a, guess there's, there's more effort in Player Player too. On the, on the snares and they have a the only thing that's that's bad about it is that it doesn't just it doesn't have yippee as yep, the as exactly. the combo sound it's, that's what you that's the one thing that me bean machine does have yeah over other players is better combo sound yeah the yeah the combo sounds in mean bean are great now i'll start okay <laughs> well then zach what have you been playing well i did play something new, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Don't get too enthusiastic because you know exactly what kind of game this is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's a game called Automation Empire, which tells you all you need to know. <laughs> okay, Automation <okay>. Empire. <laughs> Does it it's automate basic... the process of playing Civilization? I mean, that would be kind of interesting, actually. <laughs> if you could like, if you could set up like commands for, for a Civilization game and just let it go and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, so some like build your own civilization AI because they don't just, seem to be able to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it would be like a crowdsourcing for the next Civ game secretly. We're going to record all the data of people building their own AI for Civ and then just choose the good ones, <laughs> put them in the actual game. It's just like the new um, like AI thing for Age of Empires. <laughs> they could, they, you know, it can beat StarCraft AI, can now beat StarCraft players. Yeah. It's weird. Oh, that was yeah. Deep Mind, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But Automation Empire is basically sort of a halfway house between Factory and Satisfactory, I guess. Hmm. It's, it's a 3D. still a top. Like yeah, it's 3D, but like a top down, ah. no character kind of perspective, even though Factory right. does have, still have a character, I guess. But <laughs> sort of, yeah. But yeah, it's the it's the sort of midway. But the trouble, the big problem with it is moving immediately to the bad things, as we always do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have sound reviews. The big problem with it is like it just doesn't have much to it. At the, at the, I say yeah. at the moment because or it maybe is ever. it's not not like a early access or anything. It just came out, but it definitely feels like they could work on it and add more stuff if they wanted to. Like, it's a good groundwork for a right. theoretical expansion to the concepts, but it doesn't add very much to it. Like, there's basically, you have you have the different resources, like, you know, iron and coal and gold or whatever, but they, they all act exactly the same, and there's only two processing steps. You take the ore, you smelt it into refined ore, and then you combine a refined ore with one of the other ones in a combiner, and it makes a slightly better product. <laughs> and that's... It, that's all there is to it. Like that's all the different processing options there are, and for all the different resources, it's the exact same processing options. Even oil, weirdly, like when you have an oil well, you put a, you get a crate of oil <laughs> that you run for a refiner, and it makes pure oil, and then you put that into a machine that combines it with gold or whatever to make gold fuel. <laughs> it's gold like, fuel. It's just like it's not. It doesn't have much, you know, complexity to it. Hmm. The complexity that it does have is mainly in like the way the transporting of stuff and the factory buildings is one of the main differences. Like when you're transporting stuff between all, all like the refiners and and like the furnaces and whatever have to be inside factory buildings. So that is a sort of a slight more interesting restriction because you're you're having to you, you obviously you choose how big the factory building is so. Mm. You it's not exactly a space limit in a sort of a puzzle game kind of way. It's more like a monetary limit, I guess, <laughs> on how big you can build. But then when you're when you make the products inside the factories, you then have to transport them and like the conveyor belt type things only work inside the factory, so then you have to transfer it onto a minecart rail or whatever to take it to another factory or maybe just to an output place, like trucks or whatever, or an actual train that takes it off the map when you get the money. So it, it it does sort of have some elements of 
that would make it slightly different to Factory or Satisfactory. The actual require, I mean, Satisfactory, you can build it inside the building, but only if you want to. Like, mm. it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whereas in this, it's actually a restriction. And then the, the transport network has its own sort of, you have the minecarts, which can, which like move faster on the elevated rail than they do on the ground level. So you want to build them higher, and then that you have to bridge them over each other. And you've got the like claw arms that can pick up crates, but can't. The crates have to be like made in a crate maker. Right. <laughs> but right. then if you've got like an output pipe that comes from a storage tank, that can output directly into a minecart. So it's like the crates and the and the sort of loose stuff is a separate system almost so you have to transfer between them hmm. just, that's, that's kind of interesting yeah kind of except it's i mean it just ends up being like one yeah it's a one thing, thing right, one yeah. step process you just have to slap a crate maker in at some point to make the crates <laughs> so you can't like you don't actually have to like provide the like empty crates no like, the crate makers just make those infinitely so you should have a process to make empty crates and then yeah. feed the empty crates into the crate maker to crate things up yeah that would be then... more complicated but yeah, it's a, it's. And then you might need different grades of crate for different grades of material. Like you wouldn't necessarily want a wooden crate to put oil. <laughs> well, in yeah, it. exactly. That's where the, you're getting to the situation where you just get a crate of oil. I mean, logically, you should just have pipes because pipes do exist, but they're only for water. <laughs> oh. And that and the water is only for basically like buffing the buildings. Like if you plug water in, they get they get bonuses. Mm. Like the mines mine faster and the, and the the refining stuff inside the buildings uses less power because it's air conditioned because you're automating your men faster that way right? <laughs> well it's not men <laughs> that's what i mean automate. like why do they need water it's fra- fracking is what the, what it says on the line oh really you get 30 percent more output because of fracking <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah it seems like it's a, it's a fairly solid base of like the transport network idea but with not much to do with it i guess <laughs> And also it does have some elements where it's just like it doesn't quite work as nicely as you'd like it to. Like when you have when you've got like an output tube from a tank that's uh, that's loading into a minecart. So the minecart drives up, it uh, fills the first cart, then it moves forward, then it fills the second cart, then it moves forward, then it fills the third cart or whatever in a traditional kind of way. Mm. You can select the output pipe and you can say like skip every one. So it will fill up the first car and then skip the second one and then fill up the third cart on a train of mine cars. And you think, okay, so what you could could then do is have two output pipes, set the first one to skip every other one and then just have them fill up twice as fast, right? Because it's you'll you will fill two carts at the same time. Right. But it doesn't do that because it doesn't line up. Mm-hmm. Like the minecart tr- train, like minecart cars are like one and a half tiles long essentially. Uh, okay. So if you have two output pipes that where they're set to skip every other one, it doesn't actually fill up two at once. It just fills them up like with less transition time between them, which is completely irrelevant because it still has to travel that distance anyway. Hmm. It's like they, that that kind of thing does, and it's the same with like the claw arms and whatnot. If you have a train of six claw arms and like two unload or two load spots, so you're like, oh, it can pick up two crates at once. It can't because the the claws are like slightly more than one square wide so it never lines up to pick up two ones mm. so it's like that kind of thing is i mean it could possibly be fixed to work better maybe i don't know so again as i say it's like it's it's a fairly solid base for a theoretically better game if they want to continue to work on it <laughs> mm. will they just make it two well yeah maybe like I said, it's not early access. <laughs> Merchant Jump Part 2. We want your money edition. Yeah. So I played some of that, but not too much because, you know. <laughs> you figured it out. I figured out the puzzle. Yep. That's, yeah, that's the trouble. <laughs> you just need the most complicated puzzles to be for yourself to solve. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it, along that vein, what I've actually been playing more of is Minecraft. Get back into the mod pack. <laughs> I have. To, I never request for you guys. I talk about it on the on air on the podcast, but might as well so that you get some exposure. But uh, my brother Stephen is almost done with the final version of his Minecraft adventure map, so oh, right, he yeah. needs he needs you guys to play it and make a video. <laughs> um, it's it. Do you know about this? 
No, I don't. He did one ages ago, but he he's been upgrading it like heavily because Minecraft has changed a lot over the years. Yeah, um, lots of command it, blocks and stuff now. It's the it's Thunderbirds. He's built the entire of Tracy Island plus multiple like missions. Uh, yeah, I, we, I looked the, oh, we looked right. at the we looked at the like non-functional version of that right. at one point. So yeah. now before it had the actual like adventure. It, well, we stuff did actually build. do a video of it, but the video didn't record. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's well, a... now it's a f- fully rebuilt and it's a full adventure map. So um, need you guys to make that video. Uh, but and also his his Mac isn't beefy enough to really make the video, so he kind of needs. Well, I mean, we'd have machine. to see if we can get it to function on Rob's oh, computer. Well, and which Minecraft client is he using? Yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know. Presumably, is whatever the latest Minecraft is. Minecraft for Windows 10, or is it Minecraft Java? Well, it be Java, presumably. It'll be the Java one, I'm sure. It has all the advanced stuff, like the command blocks and whatnot. Yeah. So you'll have to power through the Java one, I imagine. Um, anyway, uh, so, yeah. And... Uh, that would be good. Doesn't matter. Uh, they cancelled the good. graphics update for the Windows 10 one, so we're not missing anything. <laughs> yeah, it's good that you're back into Minecraft, then, Zeg, because that works out well. I guess. But yeah, I've been continuing to mod pack it away. I've been trying to play with <laughs> it's this the mod pack that I've been playing. There's this Omni Factory thing, which is ma- based mainly around the Greg Tech, as I mentioned last time, <laughs> which is the, which is the modern version of Industrial Craft. I've been trying to play it because it has a quest book like i mean a lot of the modern minecraft mod packs have this kind of thing now where it's basically a it's sort of like achievements except not really it's more like a a guide kind of like it's a big web of icons where it's like you do this first and then that leads to this and this and then you do those and so it's sort of a tutorial a sort of step-by-step way to progress through the thing but in a less you know a less direct way like you can do your own thing if you want or, or if you know how to play mod packs, you can just look in the item encyclopedia and work out what you need to do. You don't need to follow this exactly. Hmm. But I've been trying to follow it because I just wanted to see what it was like, like to see if it to see if it functioned basically. And I'm not sure it does. Like I've been trying to follow the 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 route laid out in this book exactly, and it doesn't. It like. It doesn't really skip steps. It's fairly good at saying you need this and then this and then this. But it's like the auxiliary stuff, it kind of doesn't mention more than once. Like right at the start, it's like build a steam dynamo to get your first bit of power. And then you build that. And then it basically never mentions power again until much later on. And it's like, if you were only using that steam dynamo for that whole time, it would have sucked. (laughs) So eventually I was like, this is just not enough power. I need to... Well, actually, I didn't really build anything different. I just built more and like upgraded them faster than it would have intended me to, according to the way it progressed through the book. But it's just like it doesn't it doesn't fully cover the like auxiliary areas. Like when it's like you get you get a lot of you should get all this coal, and I'm like, okay, I should get some coal, and it's like, don't worry about how inefficiently you're processing this coal. You can just get more coal, and I'm like, yeah. I, I mean, I guess, but I'm only one person <laughs> and I don't want to spend all my time mining. Mm. So maybe I should efficiently process this coal and get more. In a game called Minecraft. <laughs> you're really you're never meant to mine in Minecraft. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, so following it along is okay, but you still kind of, at a certain point, you're just like, yeah, I just need to, I just need to know how this works and just get, get out there and do my own thing. I mean, mm. Do the better stuff that it doesn't tell you to do. It never even tells you to build solar power. I don't know why, because you know solar power is free. <laughs> that's the that's the best. You don't have to mine at all, apart from the main solar panels, I guess. But you know, it's a one-time investment. Just need your starting materials, and you're good for. A while. Yeah. I guess the yield can't be that high. Well, the 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 way it works in this mod pack is that all the solar panels are basically upgradable. Like you take two level one solar panels and basically mash them together to make a level two solar panel <laughs> with okay. some other stuff. But <laughs> essentially, no matter if like it wouldn't matter if you made a shit ton of level one solar panels, they're all going to be useful still because you can then just upgrade them when you have the other stuff I see. to turn them into yeah. level twos. But yeah, and I've just started getting to the point where I'm <laughs> reaching the point of automation in this mod pack, which is it's a modern version of or. 
I guess it's, I wouldn't necessarily call it a modern version. It's more like the only currently functional version of the digital storage that they've done in some other mods previously, where you basically convert items into data and then they just go into a, into a, basically a disc rack. Well, it's Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Put your Pokemon in the computer. Yep. You just put all your items into the computer system so you don't need to worry about having a shit ton of chests all over the place. Everything is in there, and it's a searchable database, so you can just search up when you need anything. But then the more complicated part is the automation, where you're you're meant to be able to make it so that basically your system can auto craft stuff, or you can basically order things. You say like, "I need another one of these machines," and then you just click the button, and then in the background, it automatically runs all the different raw materials through all the different machines to convert it into the parts, and then it just outputs the thing you want. Hmm. And it's like, that's cool, but it's a lot of slightly awkward effort. Because obviously it's trying to interface this whole computer system with a variety of other machines from other mods that work in other ways, potentially. So you have to, you, you're basically kind of programming it, sort mm. of, but not really. You have to make these little patterns that say, you, you, you give it the input item. So you're like, oh, here's a, Iron, iron bar and then you tell it what the output should be so you're like okay I'm going to turn that iron bar into an iron plate right and then you attach you attach a, you take that pattern you put it in a, like an attachment that sits on top of the machine that does the process so like the plate making machine you have okay. your computer network attached by a cable to an attachment point on that machine so it can interact with that machine and then you put the specific pattern for the thing you want it to do in, so it's attached to the correct machine, so it can actually perform that. <laughs> okay. So it's not quite as simple as just saying you need plates, and then the machine figures it out. You actually have to build the specific machine that it needs and set it up right, and therefore you're kind of limited by you know space still. If you I mean, have that sort of figures it out, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean sorry, I mean that you know, makes sense. Like you wouldn't just be able to say, "I need plate plate mail from nothing." <laughs> well, it's, the it's because just... it's not an automatic. It doesn't because theoretically, it might be able to work it out by itself. Because a lot of things in Minecraft, the way the recipes are organized, they're basically organized by the type of machine. Like if you go into the encyclopedia of everything, the, all the items, and you say you look at a furnace. The furnace will tell you everything that it's possible to smelt in a furnace. Oh, I see. So theoretically, it might be able to work it out manually, but that would probably lead to some weird edge cases. And also, if there's multiple uses for one type of item, that would probably confuse it. Hmm. So you do kind of have to get a bit more specific. So then, then you're still having to build like you can't just have one furnace that does everything. You are, you're going to be limited by how many different patterns you can attach to that one furnace. So like that one furnace can maybe do like ten different smelting tasks so then you're going to need multiple furnaces and then yeah that's the whole point of this mod huge factory <laughs> omni factory in fact <laughs> yeah. a factory of everything but i'm then then i'm running into my classic problem which is you know efficiency where i'm like <clears throat> i don't want to build all this shit by hand but then i'm gonna to have to build a lot of stuff to even initialize the automated system <laughs> So it's l trying to work out how little I can get away with building by hand before you can get the automation up right. before I can actually fully automate it. And then there's the whole situation of like at some point I'm apparently going to go to space because I've just started being like build a spacesuit. And then at the bottom of the page it says go to the moon at some point. And I'm like, so should I build anything in this space, or am I at some point going to have to rip this all up and move to a completely different base? <laughs> and that's the worst. If you design a whole system and you're like, oh, I've got this nice automated system and then I have to move to a completely different place. <laughs> Take it all down. Pack it all up. Pack Unless it up, pack is... it in. Let me begin. Unless the um, moon is just for like other materials. Well, I mean, it is for other materials, but like, would it be more beneficial to have your whole base be on the moon? Like, which direction has the most resource transfer, essentially? Mm -hmm, right. Are you going to be using a larger proportion of the materials from the planet or from the moon in the long term? There are ways around that, of course, because, you know, you can just make chests that just teleport stuff, essentially. The ender chests. But, you just put a, but then you have to, like, chunk load and all that crap because of the way Minecraft works. 
if you're not looking at it, it's not loaded. Or well, <laughs> right. not not exactly looking at. It. If you're not in the vicinity, yeah, it's yeah. not loaded. And then all the machines stop working. So if you've got like your storage network is on one planet and you're on another planet, you theoretically could have a wireless system to transmit that to the other place, but you'd have to keep the original one loaded while you're not actually there. And you know, then that's using extra resources or whatever. <laughs> Of your system, not like in Minecraft. <laughs> of your computer. On the plus side, it does have a nice easy chunk loading system built into this. Into It's not really part of this mod pack. It's actually sort of a background utility that is sort of built into the into the modding system of Minecraft. There's these yeah, right. certain sort of overarching mods that run on a lot of... that just sort of, are just sort of back-end. Mm. And there's one where you can just basically... It shows you a top-down map of your immediate vicinity, and you can just toggle which chunks you want to stay loaded. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Huh. I sort of thought this through. I'm like, oh, right, there's a way of manipulating its loading system. Yeah. To... I mean, the, the chunk loading always used to be a problem, even back in like the old days of like Buildcraft and whatnot. Hmm. In the really old ones, it used to be, you have you used to have to make like a physical item. Like an actual, like a chunk loading device that you just place in the chunk you wanted to stay loaded, and I assume on the back end it must have basically been like spoofing a player. Oh, right, like it was making the game think that there was a player there. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's probably still what it does to some extent, but yeah, maybe it's not like a physical item you have to make any longer. It's mm. just a, it's just a UI toggle. It's <laughs> quite interesting. Quite interesting. So yeah, that's Minecraft. Good old mod, my 16 gigabytes of RAM being put to good use. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's for. Cooking, Cooking it. Although now 16 gigabytes is still considered, obviously, it is a lot and it's still expensive to get, but it's like my first job, like, I don't know, eight years ago, I had 16 gigs of RAM. Well, that's a corporate RAM, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's corporate personal RAM. RAM. I have had to work on a four gig system at one point, which was impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally impossible, so I have to get changed. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's just a bit weird how RAM doesn't seem to change the yeah. amount amount of RAM. Have you got like thirty two in your uh, beast? Sixty four. Yeah. Sixty four. What? I think. Anyway, you can you can probably, yeah, probably got the, the check. Pro I've probably got the widget on, but yeah, I've got loads. That's freaking mental. Okay. <laughs> well, he wanted it for video editing, obviously. Yeah, and then I figured out the video editors don't actually use all that. No. Much. I don't know why you complain about Google Chrome when you got sixty four gigs of RAM. Oh, no, I don't. I don't have to. That's yeah. what I mean. But it's like I, I've had machines where I've had where Google Chrome's yeah. memory usage has okay, been a problem. Yeah, On this yeah. machine, very much not. <laughs> I mean, it's a it it can be part of a problem because like my work laptop has sixty four as well. Um, Seriously. But it, but if I'm running a lot of VMs. And some sometimes I'm running three VMs at once. Oh, right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah that gets a bit <laughs> problematic. Yeah, but you could run them all with sixteen gigs each, and you'd still have tons to spare. Yeah, weirdly, that doesn't seem to work that way. I don't quite know what's mm. what's going on. I think like the the VMware runtime or VirtualBox right, or whatever yeah. I happen to be using at the time. There's, there's like quite a bit of overhead there going on, mm. so it's never never quite works out as well as you'd hope. I've been running into the problem now, though. Now that I've now that I upgraded to sixteen gigs of RAM, so Minecraft doesn't crash. Now it locks up on like CPU instead. It like maxes the CPU mainly when you load in when it's first generating the world and loading all those chunks in. The CPU maxes out, and then it causes my keyboard display to crash. <laughs> <laughs> so just looking at a MacBook Pro, which they've just upgraded, it comes with 16 gig as standard, but you can go up to 64 for an additional £720. Ooh. Laptop RAM. Holy shit. The worst. Wow. And also Apple, obviously. <laughs> That's mad money. Or you can go up to 8 terabytes of SSD storage for an additional £1,980. <laughs> oh, 8 terabytes is quite a lot. Yeah. How the SSDs you... as well. Let, let's max mm. out one of these and see. Just out <laughs> for every to... it's max face, but for laptops. Mm. So maximum face. <laughs> it's not even giving me the. <laughs> it knows one. what you're trying to do. Actually, does my work laptop have 64? Yeah. Might not. It might be 32. That sounds more likely. Oh, oh no, right, here we go. Be... Here oh go. no, sorry. It might be. It might be even a weird. It might be a weird 24. Ooh. Risky, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot less than sixty-four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thinking, thinking about it, I think my my home PC is sixty-four. I'm pretty sure. So if you put sixty-four gig in there, eight terabytes, eight gig of graphics, and um, maximum processor, 
It's £5,769. Out. For a laptop. I, I might just misremember numbers. It's like, it feels like it should be 64, <laughs> but now I'm wondering if my PC is even that high. You've got to be doubting it. actually going to have to look. You've got to be doubting it. Speed. Which side is your video on? I, I did get... Oh, wait, it's right there. I did. Okay, thirty-two. Okay, <laughs> okay yeah. much more sensible. Oh, sheesh. Yeah, I, I knew. I knew I got far too much for what I needed because, like, I never go anywhere near that on that. Yeah, machine. that's the thing. Thirty-two is like. Yeah, I'm just saying that like sixteen gigabytes was a lot, but necessary for work like eight years ago, and now only now is thirty-two even considered, and that's kind of a luxury. I don't know if you're an insane person, you can get sixty-four in your MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of surprised that yeah, as it was doing video work on this machine, just how little RAM those things actually choose to use. Mm. They, well, that was my problem with, that I had when I was trying to use Blender to render videos. Is like I feel like it's not using as much as it should. Yeah, <laughs> like how can I make it use more RAM? <laughs> like, have at it. Like don't don't limit yourself. Use my RAM. That's Admittedly, cool. sometimes I think I'm working. If I'm working with the master recordings for what we've done, those could be like tens of gigs on well, their sure. own. Yeah, but should probably work with proxies. But yeah, you don't. Know, it's easier. Yes. <laughs> but it's, it's the processing that you wish would use more RAM because yeah. it's like it could be doing so much more at once, right? <laughs> or more, it could be like rendering and then not needing to change it so much, or yeah. it could change the stuff in RAM rather than. That was more or less all I played. I didn't really play any more Luigi's Mansion. I played like a small amount. I don't know why. I had my Switch disconnected for a while because I moved it to the downstairs TV to basically see if that was any more comfortable for me playing Luigi's Mansion, which, in inconclusive, I didn't really get enough time. No. Oh. But there, yeah, I got a bit further. I got to the <laughs> I got to the room, the OCD nightmare room where it's just a fake desert, as in like just big big piles of sand, right? And you can suck it all up. <laughs> Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> An entire desert. Yeah. It's it's actually like, you know, it's one of those weirdly huge rooms inside this hotel somehow. <laughs> but of course, you know, you just soon realize where it's just like, yeah, you don't need to suck all this up. You just go to the where there's those obvious things sticking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> go to the lumps. Although it was kind of cool that like towards the back of the, that room there was like a alcove in the wall and there was obviously something in there. And I was like, okay, the, the, how do you get there? And then I realized that you can actually blow the sand as well. Like, you can't not just suck it up, you can actually blow it into mounds. Oh. So you can, like, build a ramp mm. up to that little alcove on oh, the wall. That's kind of cool. That, that is cool. Physics. Yeah, physics, kind of. Except not really. It's actually kind of awkward Staged, to even make the right. ramp work. It's like, it doesn't work as well as you'd hope <laughs> for the blowing. Sucking works perfectly fine. <laughs> But yeah, the Egyptian themed area, I guess. Fell fall into a snake pit. I actually were there snakes in there? There were snakes in that other room. <laughs> the ghost snakes. No, they're actual snakes. Yeah. Well, actually I don't know if they're actual snakes. I haven't really had a close enough look at them. They kind of look like they're made of hose pipe almost. Mm. <laughs> but they still attack you like snakes. I mean <laughs> whatever they are. But yeah. And sand is the main theme. Filling rooms filling up with sand. That kind of thing. And then you just vacuum the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> this would be terrifying in a sort of Indiana Jones style death sort of way. Yeah. Except I've got a vacuum. Except I've got a vacuum with infinite space inside yeah. it somehow. <laughs> it's like all this sand up. I had to make all that stuff just goes back to Egad's lab. Yeah. So he's just got a huge pile of sand now. Yep. And mice and donuts. <laughs> Don't all the other crap. <laughs> It'd be funnier if it would if it like automatically sorted it. He just has huge tanks of like, here's the rat tank. This is where all the rats go. <laughs> and the sand tank. <laughs> so yeah. Um I don't know. I don't know why I fell off that so much as I did. <laughs> I guess I've just been slightly distracted by my rod. And factories. And but yeah, other other types of factories. Other factories are available. <laughs> Yeah. And I played Rocket League a bit. Season's ending. Yep. And for the next Rocket Pass, obviously. They're, they've they've actually decided to finally get seasons and rocket passes in time and stick to that. <laughs> right, so they're all oh I see. 
but are they rolling immediately into the next season? Well, yeah. Okay, so five starts what tomorrow or something? <laughs> Fourth, I think. So okay. This week, and maybe the blueprint update. I think they said, yeah, it's timed with this update, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't get a whole lot of interesting stuff out of my decryptors. Well, yeah, as always, I got the car that looks a little bit like a golf. <laughs> Well, that'll do, I suppose. I event- eventually managed to recover my solo rank back up to fucking Diamond 1. Mm-hmm. I, like, the sign curve of my of my solo rank took a very much lower dip than it usually does. Yeah, it happens occasionally. But it was a real bad one. Like, I dipped all the way down to, like, Platinum 2. And I'd already said before, like, when you go when I'm going down into Diamond 1, it's like, it's really difficult to get the teammates to actually get you out of that hole. <laughs> And then once right. I got down to platinum two, I was like, I'm never gonna get out of here, am I? <laughs> I just can't get teammates who are functional enough to allow us to win. It's because I I like I used to be better at compensating for bad teammates in the age of goalkeeping. Right, okay. Because that was that was how I got yeah. out of there in the first place. Exactly, yeah. I, I used to use that a bit because it's like, okay, these guys are unpredictable, that's fine. I can stay mostly in, in the defensive role. But it's... even at the low levels now, that just doesn't work. No. You can't have a, a almost permanent goalkeeper any longer. But you know, it's still the same old problems. You drove I well, I don't know if it's maybe I could adjust for it slightly better because I'm always my position, even though you're not meant to have positions in Rocket League, just seems to naturally be far wing. Like, I'm always okay, on the right. other side of the field, Probably waiting ball. for crosses or balls well, going fine. over you the can, top. You can specialise that way, as long as it sort of always fits a pattern and everyone knows what you're doing. Sure, but it, like, at, down in the sort of lower levels, those kind of passes don't happen as much. Right. So it's not nearly as effective. No, I just drive up into the corner and then I'm like, well, I guess I'll just drive back again because <laughs> nothing happened. Yeah, cause I guess it, yeah, it doesn't happen all that often because, well, just in general, because stuff comes doesn't come across the goal <laughs> if the other team can help it. Right? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, the position that I'm trying to be in is like it's meant to be the one of the rotation, the typical rotation position. The triangle. Yeah, the triangle. You meant to have one on each side and one in the middle. Yeah. But that the person on the far side is meant to not actually really do anything. Their job is to rotate into the middle when the middle person rotates out to the first to the attack. It's like that's why it's the rotation. That's why it's called that. Like that third person is only meant to be a, a, a emergency backup, not actually a target. You see what I mean? No, oh, right. <laughs> I I sort of thought, oh well, position C is is in my head. Yeah, um, it w- was kind of like, oh, that's that's like the the strike, the lance, so to speak. Whereas A A and B can sort of be doing the work to get the ball where it needs to be, and then the lance comes in for the finish while the others like reposition. Yeah, not really. That's what the B, the middle one's meant to be. C is C is that's where you get caught out with like the idea of the third man. Is like technically that's meant to be the person on the far side of the field, not the person in the middle, right. which you normally think of as coverage for mm. balls coming over. Sure. And I feel like most of the time I get that right because most of the time, because I'm so quick to go back, I can normally cover from the far side. I do that enough when we're playing with you and Kippers. I'll be on that far side, but I'm still yes, quick so enough I've, to go I've, back. I've, I've seen that. I've seen you drift more into that of late, especially. Yeah. So it's like sometimes that works, but you know, it's solo. You're never going to get good, predictable teammates. <laughs> and when you do, you have to hope that there's so few people in the queue that you keep getting them over and over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Play at the right time. And you know, and then you have the opposite of that problem as well. When you get some idiot or complete asshole who's deliberately throwing games, and you're like, are there enough people in the queue at the moment that I can avoid having this guy every game? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> There was definitely a guy like the last time I played who I I said as much in the chat. I was like, I wonder if he, I wonder if he ever plays more than thirty seconds because <laughs> oh, right. like in the game he was on my team and the next game on when he was on the enemy team, two goals went in pretty quickly and then he just stopped <laughs> on both sides on the te- team I was on and on the next game he did the exact same thing to the other team. No, I was just like. It wasn't even like it was last moment or anything. It was like two goals and there was like four minutes still on the clock. How do people play games in this way? Like, I don't, I just don't understand it. 
Well, it's you, you know that's one. That's when you punish them. You make them stay. Yeah. Don't don't vote to forfeit. Just make no. them stay for the whole time or quit. <laughs> no, I never. And I don't like the. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can see why people would want to do it, but it's just not me. Like even if we're really bad and losing terribly, it's like nah, never forfeit. <laughs> Stick it out. Oh, sometimes forfeit if it's obvious that it's going to go bad. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not a thing but like you know especially if the other especially if the other team asks no well yeah no it. that's the other condition to not, not, not format not for it. if anyone ever says for it you just never do nope. <laughs> be it your own team or the enemy team i don't care how this goes it's like a, i'm just i'm just i just won't now yep you you were rude well or you were stupid Anyway, no, I mean, that, that makes it all worthwhile when you do get the comeback. Not mutually exclusive, though. No. <laughs> Although I have to say the other advantage of of my solo rank being so low was occasionally, it's like, you know, occasionally you get the occasional good teammate, but also there's the, the situation that I had where it's like someone, I think he actually lagged out, he didn't quit, but he won, one of the people on our team got left the game almost immediately and we still won for two on three. I was like, yep, that's good. Nice. It's a fun time. I've done that sometimes at higher levels really, but that yeah. that depends a lot on like it happens every your, now and then. Your teammate knowing how to do that. Mm. You playing three two V three is kind of a thing you have to think about. You can't just continue to play the way you always do. Mm. <laughs> a lot deeper coverage. Basically, you pretty much just have to have the attacker be solo. You have to rely on yeah. the one person up front to be able to do the whole thing. No, no passing involved. Yeah, because you've got to give them enough where you don't have the recovery time for yeah. a proper play. You can't both go at, go at a ball. <laughs> so that's that. Rocket League still continues to exist. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have more on the blueprint system next time. Well, presumably, yeah. We'll find out how it actually works. Depending on what we do next time. Well, you know I'm going to play. <laughs> no, I meant next episode. Because of the number. Well, true. Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Just <sighs> chill. Until the next well, I episode. might still talk about Rocket League. You don't never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Wow. Have you played anything, Dan? Uh, no, I've been busy um, making us a new website. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Tiny new casting. I'm putting some casters on that casting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Replace the casters. Needs to, needs to be able to be wheeled freely. <laughs> Freewheeling. That's our podcast. That, yeah, that's that <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> This uh, metaphor has worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out mysteriously well. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so we're going to keep our plans to ourselves for the upcoming episodes because of the number. Well, and also, it's the game, game of the year, year coming, so, coming soon. That's not a secret. That's no, a, no. that's going to happen in the, the fairly usual way. I mean, game awards been... are soon as well, so we've got to have a proper... There'll be what some the... like, announcements and stuff for that, Kevin. I mean, what are the games in contention this year for, in, not for us, but for everyone? Like the... Death Stranding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Except not. Except I, mean, not. In the, in, I forget. The, the TGA, uh, I did read them, but I can't remember. The TGA uh, nominations are actually out there. Oh, they, really? They've, they've been freely announced. I mean, Sekiro, um, Sekiro right? That's probably uh, going to yeah. be fairly high up. Sekiro will do well. But it's not as good as... as... Doesn't matter. It came out this year. That's how it works. Okay. Fine. Outer Worlds will probably be up there for a few. Mm. Um, Devil May Cry, I seem to remember hearing, has been a bit shunned. Mm. Like, to to some people's chagrin. Not to mine. Mm. (laughs) I don't think it it deserves to be up there. Um, It's been a strange year. It has been a bit of a weird one. How many times have we said that? Yeah. Really? Like, oh yeah. I mean, I well, guess. Gears Gears Five, I don't think will be up there. No. Yeah. Crackdown Three. Oh <laughs> no, definitely not. Oh, Unless we're talking about our game of the year, where we can give it some shit awards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would Luigi's Mansion be up there? Pokemon's probably a bit late. Well, like, and and insufficient. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion could be. I mean, I, yeah. 
in certain categories. Yeah, but really, Nintendo big hitters this year. I can't, I can't <laughs> Super remember. Mario Maker two. <laughs> well, yeah. Kind of forgot that was this year. Yeah, exactly. I think we've this is the typical problem, but I think more than even usual, we've maybe forgotten a lot of stuff in the early part of this year because we didn't play them. Days gone. Then... <laughs> Days gone. Yeah, exactly. Not that that's gonna win. Apart from maybe a PlayStation site. Anthem. Uh, oh man, now we're getting back into the classic question of does do things that we come out to count for the year that they come out in? Hmm. Anthem just came out, came out this year. True, but like, do you want to worry about that version or the version that exists now, which was pretty much always a re-release? They're both bad. Well, yep, true. don't think it matters. <laughs> and they're going to do that again, aren't they? Supposedly, yeah. yeah. God, yeah, that was news. Did we talk about? That? We weren't talking about that last time. I don't but, think we did. But, but not supposedly, like we care that much. About <laughs> supposedly, Bioware are committing to fixing Anthem. By basically abandoning all the content yeah. plans they already had and doing it, making the game again. Exactly, yeah, kind of remake. They're pulling a, a Destiny two, but imagining that Destiny one was a complete failure. And I've also seen someone yeah, saying something about Mass Effect five. Also, what? What? But they haven't finished Dragon Age yet. No, exactly. Dragon but, Age is not planned to come out like next year, even. Like, it's and like, it's and, and way, everyone like. was like, what about all this work on Anthem that's taking away from Dragon Age already before they were even going to remake it? <laughs> oh, God. I'm looking up the uh, Game Awards nominations. I think they're cheating because of when the nominations, you know, when they're, they're they year. Be, they're, they had to be put out fairly early, yeah. Oh, yeah. right, so what stuff that was, like, December, December. last year? It would yeah, be so Smash Brothers Ultimate is in there, which doesn't isn't fair. Right, yeah, because it came out December the day of the Smash, yeah. uh, the day of the Game Awards last right. year. So there you go. That's probably a winner, I would say. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Probably my winner. Rob, Rob, what's the deal with Control? Did you, why didn't oh, you play right. that? Why didn't you play that? That seemed like because, an obvious... Because I've not had time right well, it <laughs> that seems off. like right up your street right <laughs> well yeah I, I'm, I am interested in playing it for sure i think it it ended up reviewing way better than i expected for one thing i wasn't yeah. super hype on it because the quantum break just being <laughs> yeah. kind yeah. of yeah. middling yeah yeah um, it, ha- it having some good things and control kind of just looking a lot like another like, one of those like from the it. outside in. yeah um but hey, it seems to have turned out way better than that. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Time, time, time never came up to really settle into it, though. I wasn't already sinking into something else. I think when it came out, I was in Yakuza territory. Yep. Mm. Um, uh, and it hasn't really been on a great sale. A cheap ass gamer comes into it a little <laughs> bit. Not the website, sorry, trademarked, I suppose. Cheap ass gamer. <laughs> um, but me being a cheap ass person. Uh, it hasn't really, yeah, hit many sales. It's interesting, but yeah, so this... I should probably, I should, I should probably play that at some point. At some point, it's probably a bit late now for, for this year. For this year, yeah. yeah. So their list is Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil Two, Sekiro, Smash Brothers, and The Outer Worlds. <laughs> Resident Evil Two, <laughs> I know. Come on. Well, oh, people it, yeah, really the, like the that remake, remake. Is quite, it's, and it's yeah, it is. Quite I mean, that fun. might end up winning. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there's. That sounds plausible, actually. And it, you know, it sold gangbusters. And I would be surprised at that one. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, as far as remakes go, like, mm. with, okay, when FF7 remake comes out in March, yeah. yeah, it's like, do we really consider that FF7? Like, it's just re-released. It's like, no, I don't, I don't think you can. I think you have to take okay. it as a brand new thing. Yeah, I guess. Although I don't think the, re- I don't feel like the Resident Evil Two remake did as much as the FF7 one does in terms of like changing shit. I mean it plays completely differently. Sure, but like it's still a Resident Evil game. <laughs> mm, I kind of feel like you could skip every single one of these games apart from Smash Brothers. But there you go. But after Worlds, is that a sm- is that a skipper? Well, well no. It's whether you like could, it could be skipped. <laughs> could, like, yeah. 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 I, yeah, I don't know if any, any of these strike me as truly essential gaming. Although, mm. although I am super. When Death Stranding comes out on PC, I'll probably give it a look at some point. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it has super a, a ridiculous amount of intrigue for me, but I kind of think I'm going to hate it. 
Yeah. Like, or I'm going to be playing for nothing but the story stuff. Hmm. But apparently, like all the, the story stuff at the start, and then you do the ridiculous game for hours and hours and hours, and then it, there's a massive dump at the end of story. So just, oh, so just like, like Metal Gear. Yeah. Just like Metal Gear. Yeah, kind of like Metal Gear, I suppose. I don't know. The original Metal Gear. Uh, well, had, actually, I was also pacing. right. Just like that's a thing. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. one at a time. What was that? <laughs> I didn't catch either of those. I was just saying the original Metal Gear had story pacing. <laughs> right. Like Metal Gear Solid, I mean. Sorry. You know, that wasn't a dump at the start at the end. But it was, but Metal Gear Solid 2 definitely did a dump at the end. <laughs> As it was. <laughs> I mean, basically, I it was I a dump. A them, yeah, I was about to say a lot of the Metal Gear games. Metal Gear 4 definitely had a... Uh, yeah. Well, Metal Gear 4 just basically had end of mission giant dumps. Yeah. <laughs> and then the dump of all dumps came at the, at the end. At where the end. It, yeah. <laughs> I want to True. say it was like nearly an hour of cutscene at the end of Metal Gear 4. Have you seen the uh, donkey summary of uh, Metal Gear in seven minutes? It's pretty accurate. <laughs> no. Yeah, I recommend it. That guy, like I tried to resist it, but like he pretty much is the king of... Um, gaming YouTubers. I'm sure Ninja has something to say about it. He's a YouTuber, he's a mixer. <laughs> no, sorry. That's not even Twitch. Mixer. Anywho, uh, yeah, we will see. Game of the Year coming up soon. Uh, in the meantime, have we got any videos on our YouTube <laughs> channel? Sonic Advance 2, a oh, video yeah. of that has gone up in the last few days. We'll have to do another one of those because we suck. <laughs> because the game was more awkward than I remembered. Yeah, it's a lot harder than I remember. Are you trying to get to Sonic Rush or something? What's the? Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's where this although, is all going. Although we haven't quite figured out how best to film Sonic Rush because it's a DS game. Yeah, the right. green screens might present yeah. some amount of a problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can just record it. It's fine because of the resolution. It's going to be so tiny anyway. You can just have it be like, it's always like a four by three. Yeah. YouTube video. We'll, we'll record the whole thing in tape mode. You know tape mode? Like no. where, you know how like shmups like tend to like vert like vertical shmups have the problem of being like a small sliver of the screen. Yeah. Like tape mode is basically rotate. Yeah. And it means like you rotate the whole thing around night. Don't think we're going to do that on you. So we could we could do a tape <laughs> of Sonic Rush. I can't remember what video it was, but I was uh, YouTube has uh, had this habit recently the algorithm of recommending really old videos and i actually yeah, watched mine's been doing that i actually watched a four by three video on youtube the other day Whoa. i was like man this is old <laughs> wow vintage <laughs> the resolution must have been garbage as well yep pretty much excellent was it eskimo bob no <laughs> it wasn't even home star right no <laughs> they did their Halloween things again this year. Yep, they did. The only host I runner that happens any longer. That happens, yeah. <laughs> and the fan costumes, which continue to be way too good considering how many fan years stews. it's been since Star Runner was relevant. <laughs> but it was the best. <laughs> it's still the best in some ways. But no one's going to get those references. No. Oh, man. I went to a craft thing. Um, uh... Well, I was I was basically sort of in Bristol and Bath area, like over in Cleveland. I was basically sort of in Bristol. <laughs> I, was, I was sort of in Bristol. I was mostly in Cleveland and Bath, um, <laughs> so it was r- roughly in that area. Um, but they had like we went to a crafty thing market in Cleveland, and they like one of the, one of the stalls there had this um had these pots on them that where they had they put the word on them that had the thing in them. Like so, it was like a pot for cactus, effectively. Oh right, okay. They didn't just have like stamped on it cactus. For some reason, there was a question mark. <laughs> so it's like cactus, <laughs> and right. I immediately thought of possums, obviously. Okay, possums. <laughs> that seems like what? Why would you want that? Well, I I kind of love this idea. Right? Well, having... I'm like I want to just have a range of stuff that's just like questionable <laughs> holders for things. Yeah, but so then... it's like a toothbrush holder for the bathroom that just says toothbrush. Yeah, but then do you <laughs> put the actual thing in it and it'd be weird, or do you put something different in it because it's ironic? I mean, like, what? How do you even use that container? I think it's great in both ways. It's like you're questioning everything that you that's in it. <laughs> Cheese.
food. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> Except okay. it's not because no. we, we don't, Gnome's not home and we can't eat without Gnome. He's got 10 more minutes. Yeah, check out those <laughs> videos. Setting her a time limit. Well, you said 8 o'clock, didn't you? Well, yeah, she has said she's at a concert y thing, right? And she has, during this podcast, sent messages saying, so um, about 20 minutes ago, saying, there's way more of this than I thought. Oh, no. And the last message just said, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we won't be using it no. after this podcast then. <laughs> it's yeah, very, it's very rare for my wife to send a message that just says. <laughs> what a rare occurrence! <laughs> right, that's it for the podcast. Next time we'll have special podcasts and check out those YouTube videos too. And uh, we'll see you then. I hope none of you had cat allergies. She's been sat here the whole time. <laughs> bye. <laughs> One of them is delayed. Bye. <laughs>